first time uh, you know just wanted to brief you that uh, you know we we do these uh, training sessions uh, once every quarter uh, the objective really is to you know get our partners uh, on these sessions you know and uh, uh, hopefully you know these sessions are relevant to you and you know you can use them to drive more value with your customers again the objective here being you know to give you you know in a way back uh, what we think is valuable to you and can help you you know in growing your business uh, we this i think is the fourth session that we are running with nick uh, nick is our trainer who will be running you through this session for the next uh, few hours uh, today's session is specifically on display advertising you know uh, and uh, while while we run this session you know we'll be more than happy to get feedback from from all of you in case there is any particular uh, theme or topic that you feel uh, you know we should cover in our forthcoming sessions uh feel free to you know share your feedback around uh, around 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 the topic around the, around the training you know and, and more stuff that you want to hear from us uh again you know once again uh, i want to thank each one of you to sort of uh, join us today uh, for the next 3 uh, hours for this training uh you know feel free to ask questions clarify your doubts you know and uh, hopefully make this interactive uh, having said that i'll hand it over to nick batla you know who who uh, take it forward from here nick over to you perfect thanks so much garov for giving us the introduction on what exactly is the objective of this training thanks everyone for joining in my name is nick and uh, i believe some of you have already been part of my sessions in the past and all those who are joining my session for the first time i'll definitely go ahead and introduce myself we'll keep it interactive guys this entire session the way we going to do is uh, i have uh, made everyone Uh, go under the mute mode just to make it uh, easy for everyone to you know hear me out without any for background noises whenever you have any question any queries please use the chat window with the everyone tab being selected do make sure that you select the everyone tab so that everybody gets to see your question and then i'll be more than happy to answer across your question all right so let's get started and it's 1208 pm indian standard time and here we go All right so this topic this particular session guys this particular webinar is all about display advertising when we say display advertising there are quite many things which comes underneath it all right so i'll i'll speak further more on that but the like i said i'll first of all go and introduce myself my name is nick batla and uh, that's how it really looks like i'm a digital marketing enthusiast guys i've been into this profession for almost uh, 18 to 19 years and uh, i look after the training side and i look after the servicing side both both side of this particular industry and uh, i started my career way back in 1998 all right okay way back in 1998 guys from the servicing end only and uh, that was when i started making websites on my own and and that was the year when google also came into existence right uh the session is getting recorded guys just to let you know in case uh, uh, you want to get access of it you can always always get the access to, uh, to the recorded session later on with regards to the uh, servicing end like i said uh, it's been more than 1200 websites which on which i have worked across whether it's to do with the paid campaigns the social media the unpaid campaigns seo and so forth and uh, the overall forte has been uh, towards the SEO and Google AdWords, the more, and also the other other side of the display advertising. I have uh, helped various organizations, whether it's a small, medium, or Fortune 500 uh, companies, in terms of meeting their internet marketing needs. In terms of training, it's been more than 5,000 professionals. Uh, uh, in terms of hours, I haven't really calculated, but in terms of the number of professionals, it's been more than 5,000. all right talking further more about myself my my profile guys in terms of certification i have made myself eligible for all the possible certification whether it's google bing hubspot and so forth and like i said with regards to my experience it's been more than 18 plus and with regards to my uh education guys i have i'm pass i'm a pass out from university of toronto i did my master in business administration from there all right and other than training like i said i i take care of training and the servicing and both other than training i have a full time role to take care of which is with my agency uh which i am uh, you know that that's that's something which i founded myself and that's by the name of vio creations ltd it's an internet marketing agency you, in case you want to know more about it you can anytime go to this website called viocreations.ca and you can check the kind of services we provide we provide 
everything to do with social media, search engine optimization, Google AdWords, email marketing, and many more things. And also display, which is the part of the session today. Also, with regards to uh, the training, I am a speaker at several colleges and universities, one of them being University of Toronto, University of Toronto the same university which, where I'm passed out from, Humber College, Toronto, Amity, IIM, Ahmedabad, IIM, Bangalore, IIM, Kolkata, IIT, Karakpur, and several others. All right. In case you want to know more about me in detail, you can anytime go to linkedin.com, type in my name, which is Nick Bakla. That's my last name, Bakla. And uh, you can get my profile over there. Uh, you can uh, touch base with me over there. You can you can check what uh, you know my entire profile, what my clients have to talk about me and so forth. Other than GoDaddy, guys, I'm a, a trainer with several other organizations. I'm a trainer with Google. I'm a trainer with Microsoft. I'm a trainer with HSBC, with Market Motive, and several other organizations. All right, so that's just a quick introduction about me. And here's the slide, guys, which talks about the agenda for this today's session. Uh, we'll try to wrap it up within three hours. Let's see how it, how it goes. Uh, and uh, it all it's all about display advertising. When we say display advertising, the very first thing I believe which comes into mind of, uh, which comes in everyone's mind is the banner advertisement. The, the second name to display advertising is the banner. Well, this is not actually correct. Banner is one of the ad types, right? We will see what are the common uh, misconceptions and myths which are there uh, about display advertising. And we'll try to understand whether, uh, what all options are there within display. Also would like to tell you displays are, display advertising a huge uh, thing uh, wherein Google, Facebook, LinkedIn, and several other uh, advertising platforms and various other uh, ad networks also play a good vital role. We would be focusing on the bigger giant, which is uh, the Google, all right, in this session, just because uh, we cannot, uh, we won't be able to take care of all the other ones also within this session. Maybe we, we might have uh, different sessions on that. Last time it was about Facebook. So the Facebook display was something which was covered across in the last quarter. Right, and this one, it's all about Google Display Advertising. We'll start with understanding what Google Display Advertising is, all right? Like I'm, I'm repeating again, Display Advertising is not just Google Display Advertising, guys. Display Advertising uh, is much more than that. It is LinkedIn, it is uh, Instagram, it is Facebook and several other ad networks. But over here, our focus is majorly towards Google Display Advertising and uh, We'll understand right from the nitty gritties of it and we'll deep dive into uh, what all options Google provides us. And all right, so I'm, I'm talking now uh, step by step. So we'll start with understanding what Google Display Advertising is. Follow to that, we'll understand what is the benefit of advertising through the Google Display Network for an advertiser. Since each one of us over here is an advertiser, we have a role to uh, play across. We have our own businesses to go ahead and promote. We need to really know how well a display advertising platform will work for our objectives to be met. Is it a good or idea? Is it a bad idea to work around the display network? Feel free to you know type in across your questions with, with whatever comes to your mind, guys. Don't don't just wait for me to uh, stop and then uh, you know then then take across your question. Maybe uh, I I would do that from my side. Whenever you have a question, do type in. Once we'll be looking at the benefits, then we'll jump on to the various different types, the, Google, the various different types of Google campaign, Google campaign types, all right? Then we'll understand the AdWords hierarchy within the Google AdWords platform. Now, Google AdWords, I believe most of us are uh, over here are aware of it. Google AdWords is one of the Google's product, which is primarily for the purpose of uh, advertising a business, advertising a website, whether it's a profit making or non profit making website of any business. And uh, it's so it goes without saying it is meant for the marketers and the advertisers. Now within Google AdWords uh, on the, the search text ads are also created. The shopping ads are also created. Video ads are also created. And uh, ca uh, app campaigns are also created. And also uh, shopping network campaigns are also created. And the last one, which I'm going to say right now, the display campaign that's they are also created. So we'll be focusing on one particular campaign type, which Google AdWords uh, allows the advertisers to make. Once we'll understand the account hierarchy, we would be in a better position to understand how it should be devised across our campaign. 
then follow to that we'll move across in a logical manner start then we'll start with the campaign settings what all different display ad types are now this is where i was focusing more on that this is a pretty much a, a, a myth guys the people feel that display advertising whenever we say it is a banner or an image ad that's what it means well that's not true even a text ad a text ad can be there on a display network all right display network consists of millions of websites which google has partnered with millions of publisher websites which google has partnered with right and on all those websites either a animated advertisement uh, or whether it's a video ad a banner image ad or a text ad any sort of an ad type can really be shown across on those partner websites those rights so that's that's uh, something which i want to let you know right from the beginning it's not just banner ads then we'll understand the targeting as an advertiser when we have an objective to meet when we have an objective with us which needs to be met across which needs to be achieved we uh, have to have an understanding of various different options functionalities which the google advertising display advertising platform provides us and targeting is something which is which plays a very vital role in making sure that our goal gets achieved because the major, the major uh major settings major advertising settings either lie at the campaign level or there is the uh targeting settings which are at the ad group level all right so we'll understand that and once the ad runs the targeting options the campaign settings have been embedded have been set up then we look at how the advertising is performing what all matrices needs to be looked at because till the time we are not really sure what to look and what not to look we cannot really identify whether it's a successful campaign or a non successful campaign right so out of the huge database the out of uh, of the uh, so much information being provided by google adwords we might not be able to judge what to look and what not to look at right we'll see that we'll also understand various different bid methods there's always a bid which every advertiser has to punch in in the google adwords platform bid means the maximum amount which we are willing to pay for every click now with google display network there are two different form not just cpc but a different another uh, way of paying to google is also uh, that is called cpm cost per thousand impressions once we'll understand that we'll jump on to reports right reports also uh, is the major ingredient of any campaign till the time we do not know uh, what are the different reports which adwords provide us we will not be able to judge the performance of our campaign we'll see that and some extra tools which are connected with adwords which google also provides so that we can make effective use, use of that this is going to sum up the overall uh, you know right from the step stage 1 to the stage uh, from a to z on how adwords campaign should be worked across what are different uh, functionalities which google display network within the google adwords are being provided and how do we really effectively use that then we'll have in the other half uh we'll see how well we do with this i mean will we be able to complete this in first half we'll have a break in between then the second portion is going to be more about extra knowledge on display ads that which all ad display ad sizes are there what are the accepted formats any technical requirements any content which is restricted any sort of a website which is not allowed by google adwords we look into that and then some extra stuff with regards to uh, what actually makes a good display ad right what are the things which were through which we can really go ahead and separate our ad from the competitors ad and we can stay ahead and so forth and uh, when we start fresh with google display ads we somehow uh, uh, quite a many of us would face challenges or would have face challenges in getting across our ads approved uh, there are quite many instances when the ads gets disapproved disapproved we will we'll cover that portion that what are the possible and the common reasons why banner ads gets disapproved so we should know them beforehand so that we do not really get into that situation uh, that learning from here should be applied in in the practical way all right and then uh, we'll understand that how well google display uh, i mean how google display network is better than the search text ad or is it that uh, they're not better or they, they both are good in their own perspective we will try to understand the difference between the two all right so that's the agenda guys we'll get started and also would like to tell you not just theoretical information is going to be there in this webinar guys 
I'll definitely jump onto the Google AdWords uh, platform, open the AdWords account and start doing a walkthrough, right? So that uh, maximum learning happens, theoretical in, uh, with practical is the best combination. All right, so to get started, uh, the very first slide guys talks about what do we really mean by Google Display Network. I just said that uh, Google Display Network consists of uh, various partner networking websites, right? And those are the publishers. Well, this is a definition which is given by Google. Google says Google Display Network allows you to connect with customers. Now, this is, this is a information primarily for the advertiser. The advertiser is able to, when we say you as in the advertiser, advertiser is able to connect with the customers, the potential customers on a variety of ad formats. I spoke about the variety of ad formats, whether it's a video ad or a text ad or a, a image ad, image banner ad or an animated ad. These are the various ad formats, which are, we'll see as we move further across the digital universe. Now that this network, the Google Display Network spans over 2 million websites. Now, who are these 2 million websites? Let me tell you this. These 2 million websites which have partnered with Google are those websites uh, who are first of all publishers. All right. These websites have, uh, have gotten into the business of creating a lot of content. And with their content being there, they've got their website approved from one of the other Google's uh, product that's called Google AdSense. So today, if there is a website which is into the business of providing content, let me take an example, maybe a news website. I'm just moving outside of this uh, slide and let me just change the screen. All right, so I'm taking across an example of let's say a website called ndtv.com. Now ndtv.com might be a partner with Google, right? might be one of the Google Display Networks. Uh, so NDTV would be part of the Google Display Network. How I'm saying this, just because of the fact this website does have advertisement which are coming across with the help of the Google's mechanism only. So this advertisement on the top or advertisement on the right hand side, these ones are not through Google, all right? But if I'll go further down, now this particular one, which does have the ad choices written on it. This one is over here just because of the fact that NDTV as a publisher uh, made a request to Google that uh, I want to offer across a space on my website, whether this much space by this much space, or maybe some more space on the website. Well, this one as well, right? So NDTV has offered across couple of spaces on their homepage. If I'll scroll further down, I believe everybody is able to see the screen and it's going well with my audio. If there is a video lag, you can still tell me. All right, I'm going further down of the, uh, on the NDTV homepage. All right, I'm just trying to check if there are further more advertisements which are coming up over here. All right, so I can see even this particular ad, it says ads by Google. So there are three advertisements which I saw right now that have come up with partnership with Google, right? Now, what is NDTV doing right now? NDTV has approached Google with the help of a particular Google's product that's called Google AdSense. And Google AdSense is, uh, is there for the purpose of earning money, monetizing the traffic which a particular website gets. So NDTV, since it is in the business of creating content, uh, showcasing you know, news and so forth, that it does, have a lot of uh, visitors uh, day in and day out on it, you know, on its particular platform. Now, NDTV says that I do not know how do I really go ahead and monetize this particular traffic. Google gives across that opportunity. Google says that why are you trying to just, uh, uh, you know, offer across content for free and not make money, any money out of it. Or even if you are making charging across certain money, Still, there is a way to go ahead and make more money uh, with our partnership. So Google is giving across a partnership uh, proposal to uh, websites like NTV and asking them to approach them, sign in across an AdSense application. When while these publisher websites sign up for the AdSense application, they're being asked questions like, "What is? Uh, how old is their website? It should be minimum six months old. And uh, what sort of content do they have? 
and uh, how much traffic per day uh, is what you know this website receives across and so forth. When all these uh, questions are being answered by websites like NDTV and many other publishers, they are being looked in by Google, and the ones which are found genuine by Google, Google goes ahead and approves the Google AdSense application for the one which are genuine. Now, let's say if NDTV gets approved, then Google gives across the opportunity to NDTV to uh, make money by taking across certain space on its uh, various different pages. So this is only the home page which I'm looking at right now. Google, Google has taken across this uh, banner ad space onto the bottom and there are two more on the top, uh, the, uh, onto the middle and the top of this page. And uh, NDTV is actually willingly, you know, by their own wish, uh, NDTV has given that space. Now these advertisers, which we are seeing over here, with, let's say it's Urban Ladder. Urban Ladder has approached Google with the help of Google AdWords and have made across a request to showcase its display ads, uh, let's say a banner ad, one of the banner ad on its display network on various different websites. So Urban Ladder must have picked up one of the websites which could have been NDTV. Well, there are various different ways through which advertisers go ahead and pick and choose the websites or do the targeting stuff, which we'll, which we'll understand. But the concept which I'm trying to make you understand in this first case is a very basic one. Quite a many of you would be already knowing about it. And thanks uh, for being patient enough to listen to me, the same concept which you already know. This concept says that there are three players, three to four players majorly involved. Number one is the advertiser, which is, uh, in this case, it's uh, Urban Ladder, right? Urban Ladder has approached Google through Google AdWords, right? So Google is the player number two. Google is having uh, an interface with the advertiser, which is Urban Ladder in one of the cases. And the other one is NDTV and Google, all right? Now, NDTV has approached Google through Google AdSense and NDTV has made that uh, request of monetizing monetizing their traffic which is coming onto their website and that monetization process uh, gets started once the AdSense application has got approved. Once the AdSense ap application has got approved, these advertisers uh, overall banner is appearing over here. The fourth major player which is involved into this picture is the website visitor, the NDTV website, the vis visitor on the website, uh, on the NDTV website, let's say comes in and tries to consume in a lot of content while consuming this content. Let's say this visitor gets attracted to this banner and he clicks onto this banner. The moment he clicks onto this banner, there's going to be a particular per click price, which will be taken from Urban Ladder's pocket. Urban Ladder will pay that certain per click price, let's assume it's 100 Indian rupees and this 100 Indian rupees, which will go from Urban Ladder's pocket to Google, Google will keep its share, certain share and will pass on the remaining share to NDTV because at the end of the day, it's the NDTV's property, right? But Google is also doing its work of uh, managing publishers at one end and managing the advertiser at one end. The advertisers are being uh, managed across by Google through the Google AdWords platform and publishers like NDTV and several other websites are being managed by Google through Google AdSense, right? Now the percentage which Google keeps and the percentage which uh, publishers keep is never ever revealed by Google. Some people say it's uh, 68 and 32. Some people say it's 60 and 40 and some say, uh, you know, 60, uh, sorry, 55 and 45. So Google always takes, takes across a bit higher share and uh, a bit higher as compared to the one which publisher gets across. But this, these are not confirmed and Google is not vocal about it. All right, so this is something guys, uh, which happens across in terms of the partnership with the various different websites. And these websites like NDTV, all those websites which have partnered with Google by approaching Google through Google AdSense, all together they're called Google Display Network, right? And these are those websites, which are those millions of websites which I was talking about. I'll just go back to the, my PowerPoint presentation. Give me a second. All right, so this network basically, or the Google, the Google Display Network, whichever, whatever you want to call that, spans over 2 million websites that reach over 
90% of the population on the internet. Now people say, what is the overall benefit of uh, advertising through Google? Why not use it across any other network? Now various other ad networks are there. If you will go to, I mean, if you search about various different ad networks, you'll find plenty of them. But the biggest ad network, it's a Google display network. 90% of the people on the internet, right? It's not 90% of people of uh, something else, but it's the internet because it's so wide. The Google display network is so wide. That's the major, uh, one of the biggest reason uh, Google display network is uh, favorite, favorite amongst advertisers. All right. For the advertiser, Google display network can help help them reach out to people while they're browsing across their favorite websites while showing across a friend, a YouTube video. Also, I told you even a YouTube video is uh, actually part of it while checking across their Gmail account or using mobile sites and apps. Now this particular network guys is not just restricted to the uh, individual websites or blogs and so forth. Even the display network spans across mobile sites, Gmail account, YouTube video and so forth. All right. I would like to show across a small video guys about Google display net advertising. I know quite many of you are aware of the uh, basics guys, but uh, just uh, the way you are uh, exercising your patience, I don't keep doing that for another 15, 20 minutes and then we'll keep that into the nitty gritty piece. So I, it's a, just a one, one and a half minute video, which I want to showcase across uh, that Google has offered. I mean that Google, uh, Talks about. All right, here you go. Have you ever wanted to advertise on popular websites or promote your business with images and video? You can with the Google Display Network. The Display Network is a collection of more than a million websites, smartphone apps, videos, blogs, and other online destinations that show AdWords ads, giving you the opportunity to reach more than 80% of all internet users worldwide in more than 30 languages and 100 countries, or someone with very specific tastes and interests. Let's take a look at how a typical business uses the display network. Ted has created an image ad that shows off the tour packages he sells. Ted already advertises on the Google search network, so he uses his search network keyword list to get his ads up and running on the display network. AdWords matches Ted's ad to display network web pages based on his keyword list and other factors. This means that Ted's ad can show up on travel websites and on forums discussing cool places to go hiking. There is another way to manage your ads on the display network. Topics. With topics, you can pick and choose specific themes of web pages on the display network where you want your ads to show. Ted uses topics to target travel and hiking themed web pages. With more than 1 million online destinations to choose from, the Display Network gives you powerful new ways to reach people who want to hear your message. For more information about advertising on the Display Network, visit the AdWords Help Center. Oh, I'm so sorry. I, I think uh, there was... <laughs> uh, I didn't check. I, I just go ahead and... Uh, replay the video guys. So somehow the screen which was being shared across was only the presentation one. Just give me a second now, not a problem. I'll go ahead and uh, play the video once again. And uh, then I'm gonna go ahead and take across the questions which are there. Give me a second. Now I hope this should be. Have you ever wanted to advertise on popular websites or promote your business with images and video? Perfect. You can with the Google Display Network. The Display Network is a collection of more than a million websites, smartphone apps, videos, blogs, and other online destinations that show AdWords ads, giving you the opportunity to reach more than 80% of all internet users worldwide in more than 30 languages and 100 countries, or someone with very specific tastes and interests. 
Let's take a look at how a typical business uses the display network. Ted has created an image ad that shows off the tour packages he sells. Ted already advertises on the Google search network, so he uses his search network keyword list to get his ads up and running on the display network. AdWords matches Ted's ad to display network web pages based on his keyword list and other factors. This means that Ted's ad can show up on travel websites and on forums discussing cool places to go hiking. There is another way to manage your ads on the display network. Topics. With topics, you can pick and choose specific themes of web pages on the display network where you want your ads to show. Ted uses topics to target travel and hiking themed web pages. With more than 1 million online destinations to choose from, the display network gives you powerful new ways to reach people who want to hear your message. For more information about advertising on the display network, visit the AdWords Help Center. All right, perfect. And let me just pause the video. Give me a second. All right, welcome to. All right, so. Uh, also, okay, there's a, a question related to the double click network. Samir, the double click network is something which is bigger than uh, the Google Display Network. So, Google Display Network becomes a part of the double click. This was earlier being uh, the double click was actually was a separate entity. It was not with Google. It uh, got purchased by Google at a later stage. And uh, only certain selected advertisers can go in and uh, you know, use across the display uh, network, which double click has got. Uh, it's not easily available across. You have to really go ahead and uh, submit across your application to double click and they review across uh, who you are. I mean, is it you? Is it that you are an agency and so forth? There are double click for advertisers, which are approved. You have to go ahead and submit across an application for double click for advertisers. And like I said, GDN is one of one of the ingredient of it. All right, so I was just asking across, I was answering across one of the questions, guys, which was related to Google, the double click display network. And double click display network is bigger than the Google display network. And it is, it is owned by Google only. It's just the name is different. Otherwise, uh, all the various ways, functionalities, the, uh, the nitty gritties of creating across an ad on double click or on Google, they all are same. There is nothing else. There's nothing. Uh, there's no other difference. It's just the number of websites which are part of which are part of the double click uh, display network. That is way too more. All right. Otherwise, all the other things remains the same. Let me know if that answers your question. So that's about Google Display Network, guys. Now we'll understand why exactly display advertising should be used across. What are the major benefits for an advertiser? Well, we understood just now that it is massive scale with significant coverage with so many websites being part of it. Advertisers do have the opportunity to go ahead and pass on, spread out their message uh, to a large set of audience. And when we say large set of audience, it, it doesn't really just... Uh, it's not just about going ahead and blasting across a message to a lot of people. You have to be picky and choosy in terms of whom do you want to show your ads, whom do you want to, uh, you know, really go ahead and showcase across your products, key core strength areas, and you want to motivate them to go ahead and take an action, right? So the Google Display Network comprises both hundreds of large sites and hundreds of hundreds of thousands of niche sites, also. All right. Now, the other benefit is that, that it is all measurable. The performance is measurable across in Google Display Network. It, uh, the Google Display Network delivers measurable performance for both branding purpose and the direct display clients, maximizing their results. I hope the screen this time is perfectly fine. Yes, it is. All right, so the measurement part is, is being the other benefit of Google Display Network that either the Objective is to go ahead and get across uh, better branding or, and so forth. One can go ahead and measure that across as an advertiser. The other benefit, the third major benefit with the Google Display Advertising is that it's a contextual engine. 
and uh, the key driver of the success is the google's ability to harness the power of both contextual engine we'll understand uh, we'll understand this particular part okay one second amit says can you provide permission to record this training program well this program is getting recorded amit from my end and uh, definitely it will be shared with each one of you if you want it perfect precisely for yourself i can all right so like i said the session is getting definitely getting recorded at my end but you can if you want to i have given you the permission once we will look into the targeting options we will understand what exactly we mean by the contextual engine a key driver of the success in in you know is the google's ability to like i said honor the power of the best contextual engine on the planet to place ads against the most relevant content so today if my ads are related to let's say uh, web hosting web domains and so forth that's what my advertisements are all about i want and that's what my product is all about i want my products advertisements to be created and also to be shown across uh, only on those websites only on those web pages which are talking about how to get started with uh, you know uh, forming up a new website how to really uh, you know what are the ways what are the different uh, things to keep in mind while uh, booking a domain or while uh, you know deciding across on a web hosting so there's so several websites you might find across in the internet space which cover across content related to that let's say i want my banner ads related to my service of uh, my my service to be shown across my banner ads of my service to be shown across on those web pages only where the content is something of this sort you know uh, steps to what are the steps to go ahead and get started with forming a website what are the initial things needed what are the different ways through which we should make a decision uh, and make a distinction between various different hosting companies and so forth let's say i want that now that something i can go ahead and pick and choose that so that's that's a great element i am trying to showcase my ads on that content which is very much related to uh, my banner ad is all about my product is all about right this enables the advertiser to find and connect with the mostly engaged audience people who would be consuming in that content the chances of the those people to connect with my advertisement also will become way too high because they all are going to be in these uh, the the same relevance right research shows that brand recall increases significantly when ads are targeted contextually this is the non contextual relevance and right so this is to do with the benefits the top 3 benefits the other benefits of google display pricing is the custom networks through effective targeting the keyword contextual targeting along with other targeting technologies are available on the google display networks such as placement targeting we understood the contextual targeting is all about making sure our ad ads are placed only on only and only on those web pages which are which have got content related to our product the other where various different targeting with google display network is uh, the ability of the advertiser to pick and choose a certain website of his or her choice which is called placement targeting which we'll uh, see that so today if i know that these are top 5 websites which are part of the google display network and i want to showcase my ad only and only onto those five websites i can do that and that particular sort of targeting is called placement targeting placement targeting and then there is audience targeting too which we'll understand this helps the advertisers to build and target across to uh, to their own custom networks and to find and connect with the right customers much more effectively and more often all right the other benefit with regards to google display advertising is that it is transparent actionable insights are being provided and there is value through value through auction all right so in terms of the campaign management there are tools such as placement performance reports uh, conversion optimizers are there conversion tracking can be done they they do provide complete transparency there is complete transparency in terms of what exactly is working in the campaign and what's not the achievers and the non achievers we can go ahead and uh, put across our minds onto the, the both achievers and the non achievers and let the achievers uh, stay the way it is and the the performance should continue right it's all about harnessing the strength and going ahead and uh, 
improving the weaknesses, right? So this gives a cross opportunity to the advertisers uh, to look at the actionable insights. You need to help, which, uh, which you would be needing across to help you to effectively manage the overall campaigns. Right, that's another benefit. And the other one is the flexible pricing models are there, whether it's CPM, which stands for cost per thousand impressions. Every time my ad is going to be shown across, there won't be a charge for the, for the bunch of thousand times, thousand impressions, there's going to be certain price. So that's one of the mechanism. Or I can be charged across on the basis of cost per click. Whenever there is a click onto my ad, I might be get charged for that. Right. Other pricing model. Uh, so these are two major pricing models. CPA stands for cost per acquisition. This is one of the uh, way to go ahead and judge across the performance of your campaign that how much one particular acquisition is coming out to be. Am I spending 100 Indian rupees to get across a new customer? Am I spending uh, 10 rupees, 10 Indian rupees to get across a new customers? That all calculation is something which we do get to know within the panel. Right. So with this, uh, the, these flexible bio pricing models, as well as the most popular display ad formats, transparency into the performance, the Google Display Network drives results every day for thousands of advertisers around the world. So there are more further benefits, which we'll keep on understanding as we'll move further. The, there are benefits of Google Display Network over the Google Search Network also, whether it's to do from the price perspective, whether it's to do with uh, search and display when they are you know, run together, then much better conversion comes in as compared to search running separately and display running separately altogether. All right. Now what we are doing now, guys, we will uh, get into the nitty gritties of Google AdWords. Okay. There are various different Google AdWords campaign, which Google allows. Let me just show you what are those different uh, campaigns, guys. And uh, once we understand which all different AdWord campaigns are there, then we'll, uh, jump on to the very specific one, which is Google display. I'm going to go ahead and change my screen again and open across an AdWords platform. Just give me a second. All right, so there you go. This is my browser, which has been shared across. I'm opening adwords.google.com. All right, anyone, any question at any given point of time, guys, please feel free to put that across in the chat window so that I can go ahead and answer that respectively. All right, so AdWords does take a time, does take a bit of time to load up and let's just wait for a few more seconds more, a few more seconds. Let me re repeat that. I'm opening up across Google AdWords, guys. Now, this is my agency account. It's uh, my client central. So I won't be opening across my agency account. I'll be just opening one of the test individual Google AdWords accounts. So there are several, there's several individual AdWords account guys, which are connected to my agency account, which is also called MCC account, my client central. All right. So I'm just opening across one of the accounts. Now I'm not walking across through right from the beginning. How do we really get started with Google AdWords uh, campaign guys? It's I'm assuming that uh, each one of you as an advertiser uh, are either using AdWords or have used it in the past. So you are familiar with the overall dashboard a bit, right? So that's an assumption which I'm making and on the basis of that assumption only I am uh, jumping on to the steps in between only and not, I haven't gone right from the beginning in terms of how an AdWords account, you know, account is being created and how do we really get started with submitting a small little basic details about the business, right? So I am, I'm not showing that I have jumped directly into the AdWords 
one of the adwords account and this in this adwords account the very first thing which i'm trying to show you is at the campaign level there are several networks there are several networks where display network is one of the network and then which all other other than the display are there let's see this so at the campaign tab there are several tabs over here in the google adwords camp, uh, account campaigns is one of the tab ad group setting ads ad extension and so forth i'm clicking on to plus campaign over here and as you can see these are the various different networks now search with display is uh is a combination of two networks together all right we can go ahead and select this if we want both of them to work together or we can have them separately so search is one of the campaign types then comes in display which our focus is on display network only then there is shopping video and the app all right so display network being the main key focus area for us today we'll be learning that part only let me go ahead and now change my screen once again and jump back to the powerpoint presentation or it is a screen sharing as stopped as the shared window is closed one second give me a second why is this happening all right i believe now it's been shared now so campaign types guys as we saw there are uh, quite a many different campaign types search display shopping video and app now whenever we create across a new campaign guys whether it's search or display or search and uh, search and display or just display the very first thing guys which we are being provided across in the display is the marketing objectives to choose choose across all right now i i i believe this is uh, my this particular image might not be that very well visible to each one of you i would have to go ahead and change across my slide my screen again and show you live in the campaign itself now what i did in the this google adwords campaign guys i just clicked on to plus new campaign and then selected out of all the five six different options five six different network options i selected the display network now here you can see here you can uh see that there are various different marketing objective guys which google adwords is asking us to select now if we as an advertiser are just focusing across and getting uh customers onto our website or just seeing across and or just to uh we we are just looking at customers or the end uh, viewers of our ad to be increased across we can select that so this is used across when we are looking at building awareness if you are looking at uh, if the marketing objective is to influence the consideration that the objective is written on the top itself then we can go ahead and select any of these two options whether we are looking at visitors more number of visitors on our website or much more engagement with our content engagement with the content could be uh, measured across with the average time spent on the website right if that if that thing is we do much more then definitely the engagement is getting achieved and so forth now the most uh, widely used marketing objectives in majority of the campaigns are the third option which is driving in action either you as a e-commerce website might be looking at getting sales right you want uh, people to go ahead and come on to your website and buy something or you want uh, people to come on to your website and do some action some action could be like filling out a form and so forth so taking an action on the website or if the, you are looking at driving calls the phone calls driving uh, you know physical visit to your business these options can also be used across plus if you are looking at getting across more mobile app installs or engaging with the mobile app this particular uh, you know marketing objective drive action uh is is on the top of all of these so you can select any one of these we can definitely go ahead and uh, work across on a campaign uh, we'll see how how well are we placed with the terms of time we just have to go ahead and select across 
the action which we are looking at to be achieved. So let's say if I'm looking at more number of people submitting across their uh, you know, details, their name, phone number, and so forth, if they're looking at you know, getting across certain more information, you're looking at form fill up, so you can select that and so forth. Right, so that's the point number one, which Google AdWords ask us when we are starting with a display campaign. All right, so when we're starting with a Google display campaign, that's what is being asked and All right, so I'm just trying to go back to the presentation and here we go. All right, so display campaigns, guys, we, uh, while running, Archer says, which option is better? All right, so we definitely understand uh, the remarketing. Uh, well, with remarketing, uh, one of the great feature, Archer, these days, uh, when I say these days, as in it's been a year, custom email list is something which is much more better. If you have a huge email, uh, a huge database of your existing customers, uh, remarketing gets done much better. You're just trying to showcase across your, you know, banner ads to people who have been either to your website or people who have been to your website and also shared across their email addresses. So that is one step more to remarketing. I'll show you that. In remarketing, there's something called customer emailer, right? You can upload across an Excel sheet onto Google AdWords with email, uh, you know, which, which does have all the email addresses of those people who have been to your website and given across and have shared across their email addresses. So you can showcase your ads only and only to those people. All right, so after the display campaign from Drive Action, which one I can choose? I'll, I'll show you that. So once we'll come out to the, the remarketing, that part is actually there in the audience, in the audience section, that part is there, all right? So the next thing, guys, is the Google AdWords account hierarchy, which I want to focus right now. This account hierarchy is pretty much important to understand when we start with the campaign first, all right? The step which I have taken across as, as the very first one to showcase you, was at the account level number two straight away. I didn't go to the account level number one, which was uh, hierarchy level number one, which was account creation. I didn't do this, right? Because I was assuming that everybody is aware of this. Now this is an overall hierarchy structure, guys. The following diagram explains the Google AdWords account structure. The way we have a navigation, a hierarchy of our website, Similarly, AdWords account has a structure. The overall purpose of having an account structure is to make sure that different uh, pages, different themes have got, you know, categorized separately in the AdWords account only as well, so that they do not mix well with, do not mix with each other. And there is a proper concentration on various different ads. And that also helps in uh, getting across better uh, quality score and better uh, you know, management for sure, and and better performance of all the advertisement which gets created. So this is the account structure. The way for our website, a navigation is there, and that is uh, there with the sole purpose of providing, uh, you know, uh, a good ease uh, or user friendliness, you can say, for the people who are visiting the website. Similarly, advertiser who are visiting the back end of the Google AdWords, they should have, they should, they should be able to go ahead and search for various different ads they have created, any single ad out of the total advertisements which have been created. Now there is an objective why Google AdWords have got this account structure. Uh, there's, there are certain reasons to it. The, the very basic reason is that there are quite a lot of settings which are being provided to the advertiser at every single uh, level. The first level is the account at this level with small little, uh, you know, settings, or you can say small little uh, actions which needs to be performed across our like this. Let me tell you account level options are this. So the access, if you want to give across access of your AdWords account to someone else, that particular thing happens across at the account level only, right? I can go ahead and give across 
the overall adverts account access to someone else and that's a non admin access let's say it's it's a uh, the other person might not be able to kick me out it's, it's just only going to be me who can do that i being the overall super admin so i can give across a non admin access to someone else the billing portion is also entered across at the account level whether it's a credit card debit card net banking and so forth and then comes in the notification access with the notification access uh, which uh, that's also done at the account level we as advertisers are able to tell to google that whenever there is some a uh, communication to be made across right to us please make sure that either it's been uh, sent to our email addresses or we just want a notification on the adverts panel so that access notification access options are there at the account level only we have skipped that part account level options because i assume that each one of you are aware of how to really get started with google adwords when you start with google adwords all these things are being asked whether it's time zone whether it's uh, billing whether it's uh, you know several other things notification access and so forth also at the account level uh, only you can go ahead and connect across your google analytics and google adwords all right we'll see that so this is level number 1 which is over here on the top google account then comes in campaign now there can be more than uh, there can be maximum 10000 campaigns underneath one google adwords account just because of restriction of the space and so forth we have just got two campaigns we've got only two campaigns being listed out over here and underneath every campaign there are couple of ad groups and underneath every ad group there are multiple keywords and multiple ads being shown across right so that's with the account level settings and then we have the campaign level settings guys the campaign level settings is something which is much more wide that's that uh, is there for uh, all the different all the different networks whether it's a shopping network or a search network or a display network and so forth right we'll be focusing across on the display networks but majority of things are common amongst all the networks in terms of the campaign settings the very first thing at the campaign level is the selection of the network only what network are you really going ahead with once you select the network let's say it's a display network then you have to enter across things like location what part of the world what part of the specific city are you trying to target which which particular audience are you uh, more focused towards do you think uh, as people residing across in a certain even zip code are the ones who are uh, more let's say prone towards getting converted and so forth you can put in run across your ads only for that geographical location which might get you higher conversion rates and so forth right that is one plus location uh, gets used across majorly in the local businesses or local businesses uh, picking and choosing across a certain location is a well valid thing to do then the other option is the picking and choosing up of the language now google offers across uh, you know services in various different languages whether it's uh, you know urdu hindi or it, whether it's spanish and so forth on various different uh, languages where google has got its search engine in that language those languages are available we'll see that also then comes in the ad rotation uh, option at the campaign level only now as you can see underneath campaign we have got ad groups and underneath ad groups we have got the level number 4 which consists of keywords and ad this is level number 4 now over here again you will see only one advertisement being part of one of the ad group and so for the other ad group also only one of the ads there for this uh, particular ad group now what happens is the number of keywords which have punched in in the ad group number 1 for those keywords only the advertisements which are connected over here will be shown okay now like i said because of the limitation of the uh, space we just got only one advertisement being shown otherwise there are multiple advertisements which can be created right for the same number of keywords if that happens then uh, it it would be like equal opportunity is not given across to all the ads or not i mean whether that's been getting done or not so for that very purpose there is another tab there is another tab in the campaign settings that says advertisement where one can go ahead and pick and choose the option of uh, 
how the ads would be displayed and rotated across. Do we want them uh, on email basis and so forth? That all can be picked up and uh, decided across. Then comes an ad serving frequency, guys. Now you must have realized as an internet user, now just trying to change your hats instead of an advertiser now, think yourself as an internet user and whenever you are using internet and you, uh, let's say, moving around here and there on the internet onto different websites, you must have uh, come across to a situation where maybe any time of your life where you have got pissed off with one single advertiser showing its uh, advertisement again and again, right? You would be like, oh my goodness, I, I really can't take this banner any further more. This particular product is following up uh, with me like anything. Now, uh, many advertisers don't understand that pushing across a particular banner ad might really lead to uh, a negative image about the brand also, right? And uh, also there is, uh, what do you say? There's extra amount of money which is also getting spent by the advertiser. In this case, when the money is also getting extra spent and also uh, also, you know, it's going to lead to irritation. It makes sense to use this option called ad serving frequency. We can, as an advertiser, go ahead and give across inputs to Google AdWords that my ad, my one particular ad should not be shown across, right? Should not be shown across more than five times either in a day or 50 times, let's say in a month or 20 times in a week. All those options are there. We can go ahead and put in across a limit right a limit to the frequency the amount of number of times a particular user gets to see across our ad business then comes in in the campaign level guys is the budget the daily budget is always set up across on the campaign level we'll see that like i said again and once we'll create an adwords campaign so this is the campaign level settings we understood the ad level settings and here are the maximum settings which which are there are the campaign level options. Then jump, we jump onto the ad group level settings. The ad group level options, these are the different ad group level options, whether it's with search or with display, a mobile bid modifiers and display targeting and so forth. We'll talk about this, right? Then comes in the level number four, which is keywords and ads, all right? And there's not much options underneath that. So the major options which are there, is at the uh, campaign level and so forth, right? Now we will understand the campaign settings one by one. We will be uh, understanding them theoretically and then follow to that we'll be doing a practical walkthrough guys. In the campaign when we start, let's say we have got a specific uh, scenario that we want to create across a display ad. Any specific scenario guys do you want to help me out with? Anyone who has got a website and wants to share across, you know, the marketing goal, which is to be achieved across, we can go ahead and take that as an option. One second. Or I'm just trying to use across. Anybody who's got a specific website, guys, which I should take across as an option to run across a Google, uh, to run across a test campaign. Anyone's uh, individual website? All right, so if in case you anyone has got a website to share across, all right, so we have got one, which is, thanks to you for sharing that across. And that's a techno school for robotics.com is the name of the website. All right, I'm copying across this URL. All right, thanks, Anshul. I might use across the, uh, if uh, when I'll be using it as another one. Now let's say this particular website guys has to be promoted across with the help of display ad. We'll take this as an example and uh, 
all right so what i can see this is a particular school or an institution uh, just uh, pardon me if in case i say something wrong it's a school for robotics all right and if we have to go ahead and promote across this we have to be aware of what are the localities what are the location and so forth where this is going to be promoted all right so i'm going on to the campaign guys underneath the in it's chennai or right, thanks you know for sharing so it's the chennai is the location and uh, are we looking at form fill up so i think we might be looking at so if we want people to come on to our website do we want them to share across their details with a particular form fill up being there or what is it or it's it this is about us all right so this is these are the questions or oh, sorry for uh, courses in contact us we have the form all right so in contact us we do have a form and let's say one of our landing page okay now there right now it's okay inquiry form okay it's right over here all right so let's say we want people to go ahead and come on to our inquiry form and submit across our detail usually it should be the any of the internal page becomes across the landing page where it does given a lot of information in a uh, great manner and there should be a form fill up functionality over there plus you can have the form smaller forms and to your underneath your services tabs also all right so i'm just going across to one of the courses section and um, i'm assuming that let's say this is my internal my my landing page all right let's say this is my landing page i should have a form fill up let's say on the top, right corner so that anybody who wants to while reading this across wants to contact can straight away submit the details over there instead of going into the contactors and then trying to analyze uh, see which thing is where and so forth so with that being said or right, so i'm going to the campaign management now i need people to go ahead and come on to my website and take an action which is to fill up a form i've taken this as an example now the location guys can be selected on a city level state level and so forth so i'm sele selecting across chennai the entire city but let's say if i do want to uh, you know select across a particular zip code i can do that too all right so i'm going on to the contact us section and looking at the zip code which is 600091 let's say if i want to put in punch in across this particular zip code so zip code is going to take into account a smaller section so here it comes i can go ahead and add this and i can even so instead of selecting the entire chennai which might not be a great idea to begin with it's always better to go ahead and start with a smaller section So let's say I'm uh, removing across Chennai. What I can do is this particular zip code. If this around this, there might be various nearby options. I'm clicking on nearby. Now this is location targeting, guys. The various different location targeting options which are there. The moment I click down to nearby, it shows me in the blue selected area the space which comes underneath. The space uh, which comes underneath that specific zip code. All right. which is 600091 now that being done said i can go ahead and select all the other uh, places all the other places as per the zip code so what i have to do is i have to click onto this button guys it says show available locations and so forth all right the moment i clicked onto it guys you can see the nearby 
places, the nearby uh, places have got selected. Selected in the sense, I mean, they have been divided. Basically, they have been divided into different chunks, and the division mechanism is on the basis of the zip codes only. So I can pick and choose the nearby locations. All right, let's say this one. Uh, now this is just a hypothetical figure, guys. It's all up to you. How do you really get to know more about your audience and so forth? Where do they reside and on so forth and so on? Right. So let's say I've, I've selected across these particular zip codes, guys. I can go ahead and click on to done. All right. Now this is one of the option, guys. Either you enter across a country, a state, or a city, and also a zip code. That is one. The other another one is the other one is radius targeting. All right, so with radius targeting, I can go in and pick and choose the radius point, the center point basically, center point of a particular location. So let's say it was six triple zero nine. Six triple zero nine one. All right, there you go. So I'm going back to the AdWords platform. Here we go. And six triple zero nine one. Or maybe uh, either of either typing in across the zip code, guys. What can be done is I can pick and choose. In this case, the near radius targeting I'm talking about. I can pick and choose the point where I want it to be taken it across as a central point for the radius targeting. So let's say I'm zooming in further over here, and I get to know that this is the zip code. Like, I mean, this is a place which should be taken across as a central point. And for that very purpose, I have to click onto this, uh, you know, bubble box. You click onto this and then paste it right over here. All right, so that's what I did. And it says two miles, right? So radius with two miles and so forth. I can, let's try to do two kilometers. And then click onto add. Now this is radius targeting guys. The beauty of radius targeting is that I as an advertiser can pick and choose the central point and that central point can be our local business, right? If our local business has been selected as a central point and two kilometers, four kilometers, five kilometers radius targeting is being done, it will lead to better optimization, it will lead to uh, better effective utilization of all these features, right? My ad would be shown across only to those so people who would be more inclined towards getting converted and so forth. All right, so this is really targeting. I'm clicking on to done and so forth. All right, so location has been told. If I want to load across any settings from an existing campaign, that can be done. The overall marketing objectives are right up over here. Now comes in the language portion, guys, with language. When you go ahead and click on to edit, you will see all those various different uh, languages which I was talking about, which Google has got its own search engine into, right? So Google is not just in English, guys. Google is um, Google Dutch, Google Danish, Google Spanish, Google Thai, and several others. So in, in, in terms of keeping it simple, guys, we are just picking and choosing English, all right? And then comes in the bid part, guys. Now the bid, if we talk about, we understand that the overall definition of bid is the maximum amount which we are willing to pay per click, right? There are various different bidding, bidding methods, guys, which Google AdWords provides us. We'll understand what are the different bidding options which Google AdWords provide us. We'll, we'll go on to them one by one, but the one which we are gonna use across right now, it's the most recommended one, which is manual bidding. I can go ahead and pick and choose uh, manual CPC and through this the overall budget or the bid 
the bid will only change if I will change it across and so forth, right? Then I can go ahead and put in across my budget per day and let's say, it's this. Right, so I've entered across the bid strategy, I entered the bid budget, and then comes in add extensions. Now add extension guys is something which is an extension to an ad. And this usually comes across on a search text campaign or a search text ad. For a search text ad, only the ad extensions appear guys. Let me show you how do these really come up. In the search, if we talk about there are several ad extensions, but for the display, there are only a couple of them, which is location and call. Now if I, uh, so this is location extension. It's just a bubble with the address. All right, it's gonna come right over here in front of you. And this is how you really get to see. Now this is a text ad guys. Only text ad has got ad extension, let me tell you. Now text ads, also I'm, I'm saying it again, text ads are not only meant for the search network, but text ads are also created across for the display network. Display network is the list of those websites which are partnered with Google, right? Now, with this being said, all right, so I've got some chat. Let me just look into that. All right, so just another uh, five minutes or so, sure. So in this particular advertisement, what do you, you can see? This is the uh, location extension, guys. All right, the location extension. This only comes in when you have got your business set up across on Google My Business, guys. There's something called Google My Business. It's called google.com forward slash business. If you have got your business registered with Google Business, then only you can use across this feature, which is of location extension. And that's one. All right, no, this one just a sec. All right, so I can build in across a location extension. For that, I need to have I need to have my Google Business account connected with this. All right, so I'm not showing it further. You can do it pretty easily if you have your business set up with Google Business. All right, you've got your business being part of the Google Maps. All you have to do is you have to just click on to add now, and it will ask you for the Google credentials right, which you use for your Google business. Once you will enter that, it will tell you that these all businesses are part of your Google business. Which one do you want to connect and sync? Then you will go ahead and select that, all right? The process of getting your business, uh, reg you know, registered with Google business is pretty simple. You just have to go ahead, go ahead and give it across your details, your phone number, your uh, name, your overall business product and services and so forth, all right? You give across all those details and then Google business listing, if it gets approved, it, it's right over there. Call extension guys, call extension is all about, all right, let me just show you. Call extension is seen across on the text ads again. And the way it's shown, seen across on a banner ad and on a Oh, sorry, on a laptop or on your mobile phone. That's our, that's two are different things. And let me show you both of them. Well, this is a call extension. So over here, or this is pretty much not visible. All right, so there we go. This is a great example of how a call extension looks like on a mobile phone, right? It's just a button which comes in across which says call now, call. The moment you click onto this drop down, this particular button, the phone call will ring in automatically. The phone call will ring in automatically and so forth. All right, so this is with the call extension for mobile and similarly for the desktop. All right. So that's once that's being done, you go ahead and put in across more information from the additional settings option. 
and uh, we can take it further, guys, after the break. So we can have a 15, 20 minutes break, and after the break, we can go ahead with this portion. I'll go ahead and so I'll I'll put myself on to mute, guys. We'll go for a break now, 20 minutes break, and then after the break, we'll take it further and we'll continue with preparation of our Google Display ad. So what we have done so far, we have selected the type, we have selected marketing objectives that this is what we want. And one of the marketing objectives which we have chosen is the so form filler functionality. And then we went ahead and selected the locations on which we want to show our ad, the languages being English, and also the bid strategy, the being the manual one, just because that's most easy, the most recognized. A recommended one then understood then i went ahead and punched in across the budget per day and then add extensions which we are not using in display um, so they we are not using them for display there are only two ad extensions out of six seven in total right which we'll be using only for display advertising all right and then the rest thing guys after this will be followed after the break so it's almost close to 127 we would be meeting across at 150 after 20 minutes break and I'm putting myself onto mute. Perfect.
All right, so let's get started after the break, guys. Just trying to check if you guys can hear me. Please do acknowledge in the chat window. All right, just trying to check if you guys can hear me. Can we get started after the break, guys? All right. Perfect, thanks, Amit, for acknowledging. So we were done with the ad extensions, all right? Like I was saying, the ad extensions are applicable, both the call extension, like the way it is being seen, it, it gets shown like this, and also I had shown you the location extension. You get to see that across only with the text ads, right? Now we won't be creating across a text ad just to, uh, you know, make it uh, much more convenient. We will be doing uh, the ad formation, which is the image, the image type one, because that's the most common one. So I'm not creating these two. If you want to create the call extension, it's pretty easy. You just have to click onto this and give it across a phone number, right? And your ad extension would be up. But again, it would be only used when you have a text ad format. Similarly, location extension, like I was telling you, you have to go ahead and click on to add. Now it'll ask you for the Google business account. And for this particular location extension, your Google business account, first of all, should have your business being connected onto it, all right? And that connection, uh, your, your business registration onto Google business is pretty easy affair. You just have to submit across your business details, the name, the address and the phone number and so forth and then the verification code will come in and you have to take that verification code from a it would be a post mailer basically and you have to take that and then punch it back to google business account and it would be done now there are several other additional settings guys which are done at the campaign level and that's what we were looking at in the uh, presentation slides which i was showcasing you the delivery method is the first i mean the other campaign settings now what it says is that do you want to show across your ad? Uh, I mean, do you want to really go ahead and uh, dissect across your budget, your daily budget throughout the day? Or you just want to go ahead and, uh, you know, exhaust your daily budget on an accelerated mode. So let's say if you've got a pretty uh, less budget guys, I mean, it's, it's a quite obvious, uh, you know, having a smaller budget per day. So the way I have entered across 200 Indian rupees per day, it's a pretty, it might be a lower budget depending upon what I'm trying to target, where I'm trying to show my ads. So let's say 200 Indian rupees, my daily budget uh, doesn't give me a flavor of showcasing my ad in the, uh, as in throughout the day, all right? So let's say I'm running my advertisement for 24 hours for the overall 24 hours in a day and uh, my ad starts at 12 midnight from 12 midnight to 12 midnight all right for 24 hours now 200 indian rupees which is my daily budget let's say gets consumed across within half an hour so at 12 midnight it starts and by 12 30 midnight it gets exhausted in full because the number of clicks which i receive in half an hour the the total amount which i have to pay for those uh, clicks which i receive in half an hour is much uh, closer to 200 rupees the moment it reaches to 200, my ad will stop then and there. All right. Now this gives me uh, a dis. I mean, there is a disadvantage to this feature that with the lower budget, I might not be able to showcase my ad in the other part of the day, whether it's in the afternoon hours, evening, late evening, uh, in the morning hours, and so forth. If I select across standard, what will happen? My ads would be shown evenly over time. It would be like let's say 20, 30 rupees would be. Uh, segregated for the uh, you know morning hours and then again 20 30 40 rupees for the afternoon or the noon hours and then for afternoon noon hours it would be another 50 and then evening hours would be another 40 50 and then so forth and so on right what's going to happen this way it's leading to it is leading to my uh, uh, you know my ad being shown across throughout the day and i'm getting across a flavor of how people who are coming on in the other half of the day, the other different duration of the day, whether they are more 
serious about buying across a pro, you know product or service which i'm offering or uh, or not i mean i'll be able to judge that so this is one or i can go ahead and select the accelerated with this it would be like my ad will stop then and there when my entire budget would be done all right so this is accelerated and standard i'm going ahead with standard then comes in the scheduling guys the scheduling is also done at a campaign level i can pick and choose the date when i want to start my ad and when i want to end it so let's say i want to end across my advertisement on 31st of march starting from 9th march i can schedule across my advertisement as per the days also let's say on monday i want to start my ad at 12 midnight and run it up till only let's say 6 am then again on monday again after 6 am i want to run my ad start again i want to i want my ad to start again at 10 four hours gap and then uh run it till 4 pm now this is purely on the basis of what my business is all about i mean majorly you know if i go ahead and take across an example of a of a restaurant i do have the uh, ability to go ahead and pick and choose uh, my advertisement hours in sync with the uh, promotion of my particular meal so let's say if uh, if my advertisement is all about breakfast being promoted i'll go ahead and promote across my ad for those breakfast hours only and only for those days which i want to right so i i can do ad scheduling a lot depends upon the business or the kind of business which it is which we are trying to promote all right then the other campaign setting guys okay we have an option of selecting the 12 hour clock or the 24 hour clock the other setting guys is the ad rotation i was telling you that for every single campaign we do have multiple ad groups and underneath every ad group we have multiple ads and multiple keywords when we were looking at the campaign the overall adwords account hierarchy if you remember now for one single keyword there would be two three four five different advertisements which would would, would be fighting to uh, to be shown across now if i want to make sure that my ads all my ads are being given equal opportunity i can go ahead and choose in across this option which is called ad rotation and what will happen i will be giving cross instruction to adwords adwords as in the technology to go ahead and show all my ads on uh, uh, you know in such a way that they all get optimized for getting me uh, maximum clicks for the budget i have or there can be another option that i can go ahead and give uh, instruction to google adwords to please optimize my entire advertisement all my advertisements for the number of conversions for getting across maximum number of conversions now this option is not accessible now right now it's not uh, uh available just because of the fact that this is enabled only when we set up conversion guys there is this tab called conversion whatever uh action i want from my end customer to perform on my website i have to report it to google adwords by going into the ad conversion section so we'll see later on how do we set it up so if my website is let's say all about collecting i want people to go in and submit across their uh, form i mean submit across their individual details i can go in and mention this i can mention that it's a form fill up which i am defining across as a conversion or i can mention that it's a what do you say let's say a, a purchase on my website which i am defining across as a conversion so let's say it's an e-commerce website so that all can be done across whether it's uh, what is the my conversion once that's once that's been done the conversion is being defined and my ad runs across for few days conversion value starts pouring in certain conversions get uh, you know uh, certain conversion starts uh, getting reflected into the google adword dashboard then only this option would be available all right then the other two uh, uh, you know at the bottom we have got rotate evenly and rotate indefinitely these are not highly recommended this is just a way of making sure that our advertisements are rotated uh, automatically it doesn't really take into action the optimization part the rotate indefinitely one will make sure that your lower performing ads are more uh, are you know you are you're showing across a low performing ads more evenly with the high performing ads which you do not optimize so 
usually uh, we don't really go ahead with these two it's either the optimized for clicks or optimized for conversion those are the more uh, recommended ones now the other setting which is at the campaign now it's at the campaign level only guys where the maximum settings are there frequency capping is the other one i was telling you that i can go ahead and restrict across the number of times my ad is being shown across to one particular individual in a day so let's say one particular individual be able to see across only five times you know five times my advertisement i can do it for per ad per day basis and i can restrict it or i can restrict it on per week per month and not just per ad but per ad group per campaign all right so what's happening every advertisement of mine will not be shown across more than five times to one single individual for a single day all right i can restrict that across another thing is digital content label if my uh, you know website has got certain content which is not suitable across for certain audience with let's say whether it's teen or mature and so forth i can go ahead and restrict that across and instead of enable i can exclude that across all right so frequency capping amit what happens is let's say i go on to i i want to nddb all right amit and on nddb me being as a user i have seen across one of the advertisement from an from a particular advertiser called urban ladder now i have seen it once okay now let's say i go on to another website other than nddb amit and i see urban ladder again so what happened urban ladder has shown me its particular advertisement two times whether it's on nddb website whether it's on another website and then so forth and so on let's say five times i'll get to see across urban ladder advertisement today itself right i won't be able to see it the sixth time because urban ladder would have gone ahead and use this particular feature called frequency capping this is just done for the purpose of making sure that people who are seeing your advertisements they do not get irritated they do not uh, uh, really get frustrated by seeing your ads in so many number of times in a day if somebody has to really get converted and and, and get attracted towards your ad it might happen that in just two impressions three impressions four or five whatever you put that across i mean that's all up to you uh might get converted if you are showing an individual you know your one advertisement multiple times in a day uh it might really lead to a bad impression also and it will also lead to uh you know money being wasted and no conversion coming in so this is quite uh, massively promoted across when you are doing across uh, the display campaign makes sense let me know if in case perfect you got it great now the other options guys in the campaign level is the devices i can go ahead and make a choice for which particular device i want to show my ads if i know that the audience which i am targeting are highly active on a mobile device i can go ahead and choose only mobile device mobile device or similarly if i want to let's say i'm 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 pretty much sure i'm i'm very much aware that the end audience which i'm targeting is uh, highly active only on mobile and tablet and uh, i'm just talking about the audience which will convert the most all right i can pick and choose devices according to that now underneath this also we have got further more options let's say i have selected only mobile underneath that also i have an option of uh, selecting whether i want to show my ads only on mobile app or also mobile app interstitial interstitial as in the full uh, a sort of a full screen ad a full screen pop up ad that's more of an interstitial or an advertisement advertisement on a mobile website also so i have an opportunity to go and pick and choose on the basis of the product basically within that device also all right now again this depends upon the business depends upon the end customer if you are not aware of what your end converting audience is uh, very much uh, focused on and which particular device they use the most then the idea is to go ahead and run your ads on all the devices when you're not sure when you will run your advertisement guys uh, the numbers will start pouring in you will start getting to see that the conversions where you're getting what is that thing which they have common people who are getting converted are they using mobiles the most are they using tablets the most when you will have that data out are they using computers the most you might be wrong so it's never good to go with the assumptions better to go ahead and uh, get the numbers right in front of you run the ads for all the devices run the ads for everything you know 
uh, which you're not sure of, when the conversions will start pouring in, then you will see uh, that the people who have got converted, people who have bought from your website, people who have, or maybe let's say, entered across their details in the form fill up on your website, what is that thing which are common amongst them? Is it the, this particular device? Is it, uh, let's say, this particular phone uh, and so forth? So when I say phone, there is a device model which one can pick and choose. Is it a particular operating system or a particular internet also? We get reporting on the basis of all of these. Now, operating system is another option, guys, which we can pick and choose. This is a, comes under advanced mobile and tablet. So I can pick and choose only, let's say, iOS. People who are using across uh, iOS operating system, only they will get to see my ad. Or similarly, let's say people are using across Android, only they will get to see my ad. So let's say I'm Apple, guys. I'm an advertiser and I'm, uh, I'm Apple. I want to go ahead and show my banner ads only to those people who are using Android devices. I don't want to show my ad to people who are already uh, there with me, which is uh, the iOS users. I don't want to go ahead and cross-sell or upsell to my existing audience. Rather, I want to uh, offer across my product to people who are using my competitor's product. So I can do that. So on the basis of uh, operating system, plus the device models also. Now, as you can see, there are several devices which are being listed under Android. And similarly, again, there's all the various options which are Put in across under the iOS also. So I underneath Apple, you've got iPad, iPhone, iPod Touch. So let's say I want to show across my ads only to those people who are using across iPhone 7 and iPhone 7 Plus. Now again, I'm taking an example that let's say I'm Samsung and I'm trying to promote across my uh, high-end Samsung smartphone, which is let's say Samsung Galaxy S7 Edge. Now I know people who have uh, got iPhone 7 with them or iPhone 7 Plus, uh, they would be more uh, keen towards trying out a new uh, smartphone from Samsung, which is on the similar range and so forth. Maybe Samsung might be coming up with S8 Edge and so forth. So it's better to go ahead and pick uh, and choose only those people who have got iPhone 7. That's going to be another marketing strategy. So just talking about this and give with, with some more examples. Also, not just the operating system and device model, guys. We can pick and choose. We can pick and choose... Uh, the audience on the basis of their Wi-Fi consumption. So the their internet consumption, basically. So let's say I'm Atel, okay? I'm Atel and I'm creating, I've created across, I'm creating across banner ads and I'm gonna show across my banner ads on the Google Display Network. But this time my targeting is purely based upon the internet usage. My product with Atel is also the internet broadband connection. I want to showcase my uh, broadband banner ads only to those people you're using my competitor's broadband, all right? So I will not pick and choose Airtel because uh, my customers customers are already there with me. I don't want to upsell or cross-sell them something. It's just that my competitor's customers, I want to target across, right? So people are using ASL, BSNL, IDEA, MTNL, Reliance, all the other competitors to Airtel, they'll be able to see that, right? So that's another option. As of now, just to make it simple, I'm using all available operating system, all available devices and all available couriers and Wi-Fi, all right? And all the devices too, just to make it uh, pretty simple as of now. Now just forget about the dynamic ad settings and so forth, that's more of advanced. We're just focusing more on the major basic ones as of now. I'm uh, putting across a campaign name right now. Let's say this is test campaign, that's the name. Test campaign, and I'm clicking on to save and continue. Now over here, we have crossed that particular campaign setting stage. So account setting stage is covered. The campaign setting stage is covered. Now comes in the level number three of an AdWords account, which is ad group. Now at the ad group level, we go ahead and bid in, we, we put in the bid is, so we will be putting across the ad group name first. So let's say my ad group name is uh, again, ad group number one. I'm putting it as test ad group number one. Maximum CPC bid, let's say I'm putting it across as five Indian rupees. Now comes in the landing page. Landing page is the page which will open up once somebody would be uh, clicking onto our banner ad. So let's say my landing page is, I'm picking and choosing across one of these services page only. So 
So I've, take, I've taken this website, guys, which is called the Techno School for Robotics. Let's say I'm, I want uh, people to go ahead and uh, you know jump onto this page after they have clicked onto the banner. The only thing which is missing over here is a form filler functionality, which we do need. All right. Let's assume that is being applied and we are using this as a landing page. All right. I'm going back to the AdWords panel. One second. All right, so I hope the screen is visible, right? Absolutely, it is. All right, so I'm putting across the landing page URL. I'm pa I pasted over here. As you can see, it's working, and it'll give me some ideas, guys. Ideas, all right, so as you can see, there are some ideas which have come in. Ideas with regards to the targeting. Now, the Google Display Network is pretty huge. Now, pretty huge when I say there are like millions of websites which are part of the Google Display Network, we understood this. Now, out of all those millions of websites, where should I show my ads? That is something which we advertisers have to really be pick, picky and choosy about. We did understand the campaign settings. That is good that we have uh, understood that how do we target a specific location, a specific language, the device, the operating system, the Wi-Fi, frequency capping, ad rotation, right? All of those, when it's been done, then it's the time to go ahead and give across instructions to AdWords in terms of the websites where my ad will uh, will be shown across. Either I know the num the um, the websites where I'm going to show my ads. That's one thing. Or if I don't know the names of the exact websites, then I have to give across inputs to Google AdWords from the perspective of uh, you know the contextual stuff, the content, you know the kind of content of uh, uh, which where my ad should be shown across the kind of content which a lot of website which the you know which many websites will have and they will be part of the Google Display Network only on those websites my banner ad should be shown that's one that is called display keyword if not that then I can go ahead and do the targeting option I can pick and choose the kind of people whom I want to show the ads so the display keyword is more to do with the websites and interest is more to do with the overall audience. So let's take them one by one. It's from the interest point of view, from the sorry, targeting point of view. So over here, when I typed in, when I clicked on to display keywords, all, automatically 41 ideas have been given across by Google AdWords. And the way Google AdWords has given across these ideas is by uh, scanning the entire content. The entire content of this web page has been scanned by Google AdWords. And on the basis of that scanning of the content, these uh, options have been provided. So it says beginner photography course, beginner photography classes. And I'm not sure whether the photography courses are there or not. All right, so, uh, uh, well, I don't have much time to really look into the website and then make a judgment. Let's let's assume that photography workshop and so forth are there. And on the basis of that, I am providing across a couple of keywords to Google AdWords. And now Google AdWords will take these two keywords. And these two keywords, when they are being taken as an input, Google AdWords will start scanning its entire display network and we'll see which all web pages in its display network has got content related to these two keywords. Let's say out of millions of websites, there are 1000 websites which have been extracted, 1000 web pages precisely, which have got content related to these. Now my banner ad, which will be formed after this step, after the targeting step, my banner ads will be shown on to those websites where the content is related to these keywords. Now, this is one way of targeting, guys. Now, I'm not picking and choosing this one. I'm going ahead with the other option to show you. All right, so let's say I'm not picking and choosing. I've just shown you that. Let's say either I go ahead with the display content, guys, the display keyword. I can pick and choose both of them also. I'll, I'll tell you what needs to be done. Like, I mean, should we take only one of them or should we use both of them and so forth. The second targeting option is the interest in remarketing and underneath this, we've got multiple options over here. And just to let you know, this is, this targeting is purely about 
targeting from the audience point of view not from the website point of view the display keyword was purely about the audience uh, the website point of view the websites which have got content related to such and such keywords over here the very first one is affinity audience now google has got its own way of dissecting across its entire audience into different segments so let's say i want to showcase across my banner ads to people who have interest into let's say for this one maybe techno files that's one or maybe people are do it yourselfers i mean i'm just uh out of the blue i'm picking and choosing now you cannot go ahead and uh, uh you know select any option other than these when i say other than these as in uh, you cannot select across create across something on on your own wherever guys you have any question feel free to put that across in the chat window so that i can help you then and there now this is with affinity audience and then uh custom affinity audience is when you have to uh, you can go ahead and create something of your own this is bit advanced i am taking across in market audience the second one now over here there are certain uh you know in market audience which have been again suggested by google on the basis of the content which is present across onto my landing page google adword has uh, you know suggested three different in market audience people who are into computers into photo and video and also education i can go ahead and pick and choose these as you can see i have selected uh, affinity audience and in market audience both then there is an option of also doing a, a remarketing ta remarketing targeting guys remarketing is purely all about uh, showcasing advertisements only to those people only to those set of users who have been to my website before the affinity audience and in market audience are purely connected to the interest level of the audience you know i'm targeting those people who have got interest let's say related to computers who are who have got interest related to do it i mean they are, they are do it yourselfers and so forth this is one way the other targeting from the interest and remarketing underneath the interest and remarketing is the remarketing list and i'm saying it again remarketing option as the name says and most of you would have heard about it it is all about going ahead and showcasing you as a, for you as an advertiser it's all about going ahead and showcasing your banner ads to the same set of audience who have been to your website at least once right it's all about reengaging uh, and uh, trying to get in touch with those people who know you with uh, uh, i mean you know who know you from the past with some of the other information and so forth all right affinity audience is also from the interest perspective puja that people who have got uh, who are book lovers who are business professionals who are who have got interest into comics who are cooking enthusiasts who are family focused now on the basis of the uh, you know users uh, overall searches google goes ahead and groups uh, group across uh, audiences into different uh, audiences a uh, bucket baskets all together so let's say i am uh, i on daily basis use across uh, google for searching across things related to let's say health and fitness okay i'm very much into health and fitness my overall searches are related to health and fitness uh, that is one thing and also i am a nightlife person and outdoor uh, i'm i'm more into outdoor uh, what do you say uh, sports and so forth now i've got three interest my overall searches on google uh let's say in the last 30 days 60 days has been all uh, about night life you know i'm i've been looking always which night uh, which night club to go to i keep on typing in across things related to outdoor sports and i keep typing in stuff related to health and fitness so google has clubbed me as a user in three different affinity audiences this way and google will be able to showcase me various different banners on the basis of my past browsing behavior my past browsing behavior so me says if i am looking for leads then which audience type i should select well if you are looking for leads remarketing is the best one because people who have been uh, to your website before they would be the more uh, more closer towards of closer towards getting converted because these leads which 
uh, because these uh, people who have been to your website earlier, they have come onto your website with some purpose in the first go. There could be an X, Y, Z reason because of which they didn't stay on your website for long. They didn't go, went ahead and uh, they didn't go, they didn't go, you know, purchased across onto your website. So remarketing works the best when it comes down to what do you say? Uh, leads when your uh, overall objective is all about going ahead and growing leads and so forth. Now, after interest in remarketing, guys, you do have more options of narrow your targeting further, which is with the so display keywords we understood. Topics is another one. Now, topics is again all about segmenting the entire audience into different uh, baskets, guys. All right. So I try to look at uh, connecting with people who are who have got interest into let's say jobs and education. Who have got? Uh, you're, are you trying to look out for people who have got interest into shopping and so forth? All right. So this is again from the user interest basically. Now let's say these all options were pertaining to the well, whether it was display keywords or whether it was to do with the interest and in remarketing that was more to do with the content you know first display keywords was more about the content where you want your advertisement to be there and the other one was more to do with the kind of people whom you want to show your ads right which was underneath the affinity audience and topic and so forth now let's say uh, both the options where you are not sure about the websites where to show your ads, you are using those. But today, if I, uh, I'm pretty damn sure, I'm confident that I will be able to get across good conversions if I'll be able to show my banner ads on a website, let's say, on knockery.com. I'm just giving an example. I'll go ahead and pick and choose placement section. And so I know that on Nokri, if I'll show my ads or if on, I'll show my ads on some other websites, I'll go ahead and type in across their name and select them. This is called placement targeting. When the website's name are known, all right, I just have to type in the name of that website and see, first of all, whether that website is part of the Google listing network or not. So I can see, let's say, Nokri.com, apply.nokri.com. It's all there, all right? These are the internal pages of Nokri. On which particular page do you want to show your stuff and so forth? You can type in that. Right, so this is to do with specific uh, website guides. Let's say I want to show my ads on, so on New York Times. All right, so it's right up over here. Even New York Times is over here. Let's say I want to show my ads also on Times of India. I can see Times of India also being here and so forth. So we can pick and choose the handful websites which we want to, but for that we have to pick and choose the placement option. All right, now we can narrow our targeting furthermore. And this way keywords we understood, demographics. Now with demographics guys, we can put in across, we can, we can define uh, what sort of audience are we trying to focus on on the basis of the gender, age and parental status. Now, various different internet users data is stored within Google server. So let's say if today I'm searching over the internet about various things, Google knows that the person who is you know, searching across on uh, this laptop is a male because his Gmail ID, it's all because of the Gmail ID which is logged in. Uh, he has entered mail at that point of time. Also. Uh, he also did enter across his age, so the age is also known to Google. And also, if uh, there's some uh, content, let's say, uh, which is all right. So uh, there's another thing which lets Google know whether you are a parent or not a parent, and so forth. So on the basis of demography, also you can uh, this targeting can be done on the basis of individual websites. Also, targeting can be done, and so forth. All right, and then you move further and click on to save and continue. Well, Google AdWords ask you, do you want people to find you, you know, you, uh, find new customers or AdWords will automatically find new customers. You can let that check mark be in and so forth. So go ahead and click on to save and. 
Or is it saying correct some error? Let me just say. All right, so it's asking for using across the topics. Let's see. Clicking on to save and continue. All right, so the ad group level has been done and Rohit says, do, do, do we have any option to target user by the Gmail ID and display ads? Yes, absolutely, I'll be showing you that. That is part of the remarketing list only. So not just the Gmail IDs, but all the different, uh, majorly the Gmail IDs only, that's the custom, custom email addresses. I'll show you that once I'm done with this, all right? Now, after the campaign, so we, we went we uh, went to the AdWords platform. I didn't show you the level number one, which is how do you really set up an AdWords account? That is the most easiest one. But I had shown you then, how do you really get started with display campaign? By selecting, first of all, the display campaign type. And underneath that display campaign type, you've got multiple, uh, what do you say, options. Campaign settings option, how do you really play around those? And then, the ad group level was there, right? In the ad group level, the targeting options were being mentioned and so forth. Then comes in the ad creation process. Now the ad creation process over here, either we should be having across the dimensions of various different ads, the overall, also we should have information about where various policies, which Google says that your ad should not be this much, uh, what do you say? It should not have content related to this, content related to that. And there's several policies around it. And uh, it should not be, uh, what do you say, these these many seconds longer if it's an animated content and so forth. We do, I do have uh, all those policies mentioned across in this PowerPoint presentation, which I'll show you. We, we, we will come get onto that. Now over here, uh, there are two things. Either you go ahead and submit across, you know, upload across uh, banner ads, which you can get created uh, from a designer and so forth. That's one option. Or if you do not, let's say, want to have across a dependency on a dependency on a particular, what do you say? Dependency on a particular uh, designer, then you can pick and choose this option called view ad ideas. Click onto this. And it will ask you to enter across a headline. Let's say the headline over here says, I can type in across uh, techno school look for robotics. I'm just taking it across as an example. And I'm typing it across in the description. Let's just give you an example, learn robotics and label for the button, description and so forth. And then I'm clicking on to show me ideas. Now what Google is going to do, Google is going to actually scan my entire web page and I won't need a help of a designer in this case, because various different ad creatives, the ad designs will be given across by Google AdWords guys. All right. As you can see, the image, the, uh, what do you say, the content was being put in across by us only right now. The design, basically, the image has been pulled out and uh, the overall animation also has, become, has been provided across by Google. Now we can go ahead and pick and choose the one which we find out to be much more appealing for us. Let's say I'm picking and choosing the very first one. I can see, I can preview the sample in various different ad size, all right? Now uh, that was just one small ad, or uh, what do you say, size. Now these are the various different ad size which are available. I can go ahead and pick and choose this one if I find out to be, find it to be much attractive. attractive. I can click on to select and then, and then click on to save. I can go ahead and set up my billing also right now or, I can, I can do that later on also. 
I'm clicking on to save. Now Samir says GSP Gmail ads are available for paid Gmail ID too, or ads can be seen only to free Gmail ID. Well, Gmail ads are available for uh, paid Gmail ID too, or ads can be seen only to free to, to free Gmail IDs also. The the Gmail IDs which you, the Gmail ads which you're talking about, the free one also. All right. Now it's asking me to go ahead and set up across conversion tracking, uh, create across another ad, and so forth. That can be done. I'm going back to the. I'll just show you how the conversion tracking is being done and so forth. Uh, another ad creation is pretty easy. You can click onto this and go go over there and create an another ad group. Now. One of the questions was, how do we really get, uh, how do we insert across the Gmail addresses, right? And that was from Rohit, I believe. And for that very purpose, you have to go to the shared library. And underneath the shared library, you have to click on to audience. All right, so it's opening up. All right, so it's taking a bit of time, uh, just waiting for another few more seconds. All right, so here we go. So in this account, guys, uh, already a customer list, that particular email addresses list has been created by me, as you can see. And I've also connected across, you know, my YouTube account with this. So the numbers are right in front of me. And also for Gmail also, which all different Gmail IDs have been. So, that particular question that uh, can we connect people on the basis of the gmail address uh, we can do it from here we can do it from here you just have to click onto plus three marketing list and over here you have to select the customer emails now remarketing as i said uh, remarketing is all about showcasing your advertisement to the set of people who have interacted with you first so let's say people who have been to my website earlier i want to show my ads to them again people who have been to my mobile app earlier at least once at least once i want to show my ads to those people again so it's all about you know touch pacing with them for the second time third time fourth time uh, and so forth people who have been uh, by what do you say customers and uh, i want to show my ads to them i can go ahead and put in across the customer email or email addresses by picking and choosing this if i do this i'll have to upload across a csv file uh, which is an Excel sheet format only. And I should have the whole email addresses. Then I can even uh, connect across one of the YouTube accounts, whether it's owned by me or whether it's owned by someone else. It's just that if it's owned by you, then it's going to be easier. A YouTube account, people who been, people who visit across your YouTube account, you want to show your, uh, who you want to show a video ad to them, that can also happen. Or also, you can show your video ad to those people who are visited someone else uh, YouTube channel, but you need to know that person, you need to get across permission. So there is a permission based uh, procedure for that. Just to answer that question, when I click onto customer emailers, all right, so, so in case I have database of company associate email ID, which is most probably paid one, then can I get target? Well, if you have a database which you have select, which you have got from somewhere else, and that's not your cust of, of your customer, then I won't really suggest you because Google gets to know that if there would be, uh, you know, complaints and so forth, uh, reports, then uh, your account will get suspended. So it's better to always go ahead and uh, upload across the email addresses only of those people or who are your customers, as it says, the customer email address, right? And you're saying, if I have a database of company associate email ID, I'm not sure whether you call them customers, company associate. So you have to really see from your 
a business perspective, you're saying company associate email ID. Uh, if you call them customers, then definitely go ahead and use that. If you do not, if they're not your comp uh, you know, customers, uh, probably then in that case, you won't be. All right, and you're saying which is most probably the paid one, then I can I get the target them in GSP? Yes, you can, absolutely. So over here, you get across the customer email address list name and you upload the customer email addresses. And there are various other combinations which you can do. You can choose across the file when you have the file up and so forth. And then there's membership duration. Do you want this to get expired after 30, 60 or 180 days being the maximum? Or right, there are furthermore policies with regards to remarketing. So that's the one which you can do. I'm going back to all campaigns and here are the, uh, quite many things which we did. Just give me a second, I'm gonna. Pause this for a second. All right, so I'm just moving across the slides and I'm opening across my other screen. All right, so I hope uh, my PowerPoint should be visible now. All right, it is now. So campaign settings, guys, we understood. All right, I'm just gonna be quick now because we have covered all this. We've covered in the campaign settings, we get to see the campaign budget. How much daily budget are we looking at? We understood the delivery method. What is the difference between standard and accelerated, right? We understood this part. We also understood the ad scheduling for what particular day, what particular time I want my ad to run across. Ad rotation, I, we, we understood that if we have multiple ads in our ad groups, the ad rotation will determine when exactly these ads would be displayed, right? So by default, optimize for clicks is always set and this will show your highest CTR ads the most often. So the, your ads with the highest CTRs, one will be shown across and that will help you to achieve better quality score and so forth. So quality score is a concept majorly used across in the search ad formats, guys. Frequency gap, we understood that it applies to display campaigns only and it will uh, let you to decide, it lets you to put in across an instruction. You're giving instruction to search, uh, to, to Google that, please do not show the, a one particular ad to one particular individual uh, more than five times or more than 10 times and so forth in a single day and so forth. Now the Google display ad types guys are of multiple ones. What we saw just, for, just now was the image ad, right? Image ad is something which is more, much more visual and you do have the ability to pick and choose uh, the image and the text, which will be part of the total, your image banner ads and so forth. It is best to include across a call to action. The image ads which got created across by Google a while back, it had everything in it. It had a call to action, it had a text, it had an image automatically. So the best of the best things were being done by the Google Display Builder tool. So the, the tool which created across that banner, guys, it was a Google Display Builder tool. Now images are great for branding or in order to get across direct response. Now, like I said, there are various other ad types uh, which are part of the display network. One of them being the video ads. They appear on the YouTube or the display network. There are several types of video ads. All right, then that is a separate topic altogether. There are several types of video ads like in-stream ads, video discovery ads, and overlay ads and so forth, okay? Skippable, non-skippable and so forth, right? So we're not focusing more on that. Now these video and other display ads are shown across on the YouTube too. YouTube, YouTube is one of the, as we all know, it's one of the largest video ad display sites on the internet. Ads other than video, they do show across on uh, YouTube are the display ones. So if you get to see across these two ads, which are, which are having ad symbol, these are the video ads only. But this banner ad, the banner ad which we are seeing over here, that's more of a display advertisement. Plus we have the other form of uh, advertisement which are part of Google Display Network guys is the app install, not just the banner ads over there. Uh, app install ads also lets you create ads across the display network and focus on getting users to install your app furthermore and so forth. <clears throat> the other additional ad formats guys is the dynamic lightbox, pre-roll, 
right? And the display art gallery can help you create rich media ads and so forth. Targeting also we understood. I'm just going to be quick on that. Contextual, we understood that we can pick and choose the display keywords. Around those display keywords, uh, our banner ads would be shown across on those web pages which we have uh, given across instructions. And so keyword targeting is same. It's a display one. All right. Topic targeting, we understood that when Google crawls the web, when they classify, Google will crawl across several web pages into different topics, and topics are much broader than the keywords. Right, you can pick the topics, pick the topics of web pages where you would like your ads to appear. Then the affinity audience, we understood it comprises of people who have shown interest in specific topic. We I made you understand these they are very useful to drive awareness for your companies and they can have TV like reaches yet are targeted based upon user interest. Then in marketing in market categories are people who are actively shopping for various goods or services. And these users are generally in the consideration phase, guys. Now, this is one bigger thing. The people who are in the in-market categories are in the consideration phase of the buying cycle. All right. Then remarketing, we understood remarketing is all about reaching out to the audience, the previous visitor to your website. You can define actions on your site, which if someone completes that particular action, then you can put them in a remarketing list. All right. Let's say somebody who comes onto my, I'm, I'm saying that somebody who comes onto my website and <clears throat> gets onto this particular product, I would call that, I will I'll mark that particular person in the remarketing list. You can then create ads and uh, select these remarketing list. When you select remarketing list, people who are part of this remarketing list will only get to see the ad. Then comes in the demographic targeting also we saw, so you, uh, Demographic, demographic targeting involves showing ads to people based upon their gender, age, or parental status, and not everyone's information is known. So to reach out to those people, use the unknown option. Then we also understood with regards to targeting guys, the placement part. Placement targeting allows us to pick the exact sites, you know, well, which we want where our ads would be displayed. You can see the ad formats, and weekly impressions, right? Which all formats these websites are accepting and the weekly impressions which you can expect from these sites, uh, irrespective of whatever budget you have and so forth. Now talking about the advertising matrices, guys, once your ad has run, what are those matrices which you should really look at? Number one, the impression, number two, click, and the number three is click through rate. The number of times your ad has been displayed uh, or you can say you got an impression that's one of the thing which one should look at and out of all the times your ad has been shown how many times it has received a click right so when a user clicks onto your ad that's another matrix at this point in time you are charged for the click so you are being charged on the per click basis now the other matrix guys is the click through rate which is the, which is calculated across by google adwords and given to us as the, to the advertisers and the calculation for CTR is number of impressions in the numerator divided by number of impressions, num sorry, number of clicks in the numerator, number of clicks in the numerator divided by number of impressions multiplied by 100 gives you click through rate. Higher the click through rate, better uh, is the overall score, like uh, the quality basically, which you're, uh, which Google AdWords pertains, uh, which gives across to your specific advertisements. All right. Now, if you have to really go ahead and uh, control your cost, the costs, the cost that you will look into your account is going to be on the basis of by bid. What is the maximum bid? What's the maximum amount which you're willing to pay? That comes under bid. Actual CPC. Yeah. So actual CPC stands for the actual amount you have paid for a click. This may be lower than your bid also, right? Most of the times the cost per click guys is uh, lower than your bid. And uh, it cannot be the actual cost per click either can be maximum what the bid has been made or lesser than that only. Right, then the other thing with regards to the cost is the total cost, the sum total of actual CPCs for a keyword ad group or, or campaign is what we define as cost. And then daily budget is the how much a uh, campaign uh, can spend and so forth, right? The daily budget. 
Now, the other thing, guys, is tracking actions. Now, tracking conversions is optional. Whether you want to do this or not, that's all up to you. Yeah, but everyone should do it so that they can measure the return on their ad spend, right? So a conversion occurs when a user does a specified action onto your website, such so as filling out a form, checking out an e-commerce website, and so forth. And if you talk about cost per action, the ratio of your cost to the conversions, right? Cost per action is being calculated as the ratio of your cost to the conversion. It's cost divided by conversions. All right, and then the other one is the conversion rate. Now conversion rate is being decided, is being calculated across as a ratio of conversions to the clicks. So out of all the total clicks you have received, how many conversions did you receive? It was only five out of total 100 clicks. So your conversion rate comes out to be five divided by 100, multiply by 100, since it's in percentage, it brings you to 5%, right? So that's uh, with regards to the tracking stuff. Plus you can go ahead and measure across the return on investment. And for that, uh, you need to have the revenue figures and also the cost of goods sold figure. When you will deduct cost of goods sold from the revenue, you'll get to know the advertising ROI. The other metric guys is return on ad spend. Now return on ad spend is calculated across Return on ad spend is calculated across as revenue from the campaign divided by the advertising cost multiplied by 100, right? So the amount of revenue your advertising campaign produced, and also if we talk about ad cost, the amount you paid for the advertising campaign. All right, so return on ad spend, I'm repeating again, it's the revenue from the campaign being collected divided by the advertising cost multiplied by 100, guys, all right? The goal is always to get across traffic guys, traffic to the website and get across conversions. So you measure traffic quality and cost, which includes the clicks, the CTR, CTR as in the click through rate. Are you getting the most possible traffic for your keywords? How much traffic are you driving to your site? All these things needs to be looked at. Now keyword stuff and so forth works across majorly for the search. You know, you look for, uh, so this is not part of the display guys, it's more for the search. So you, uh, what do you do on a day-to-day -day, uh, level guys, when your display campaign start running in, you watch out for the conversions, you watch out the conversion rates, you see how much cost per conversion have, uh, are you incurring and what are those things that are leading to conversions, right? So you, you when you look at all that, you try to uh, get the cost per conversion down improve the conversion rate by changing various things, whether it's the campaign settings uh, or whether it's by changing the ad content there are, or by changing the ad scheduling. So various settings across are there on the campaign. You would have to run across, uh, you know, AB testing where you have campaign A, campaign B, campaign C, and all the uh, versions of campaign uh, in all the versions, you'll have only one particular small thing which would be changed, otherwise everything would be similar. And when you will give across budget to all of them, you will be able to judge all the three campaigns uh, and see which one performed the better. Out of, let's say the three campaigns, the one which performed the better, you'll go ahead and understand what made it perform better and the ones which didn't, what made it didn't perform better you will come up to the conclusion and you go ahead and you'll go ahead and implement that across in your upcoming campaign so that you get, a, you have given across, you, you've been provided across by Google AdWords, the best recipe, right? I mean, it's mostly which keyword type is effective, effective to target like exact phrase abroad. Well, this is a question purely about the search, but I can still go ahead and answer that uh, phrase with uh, phrase, Phrase match with the negative match is something which is uh, most effective on it. Negative match types definitely needs to be there and phrases are, is, is most of the times. Now again, things do differ across from situation to situation, right? That's there. But uh, in generic, I've told you phrase with the negative match types, usage is something which is recommended. Well, with regards to the other things, guys, you can calculate your return investment to understand your overall profit, your 
calculate across your return on ad spend to determine how your campaign is performing and so forth. While evaluating the keywords and ads, you will see that the return on investment or the return on ad spend to determine if a keyword or search query should be removed, added, or made into a negative keyword. All right, so that's with sales. And if you're looking at uh, achieving branding, then the major metric which you need to look at is the number of impressions. Now, number of impressions is something which will help you to understand the branding aspect, whether the branding has improved or not. For search, if we talk about using CTR as a secondary metric, lets you understand how engaged user are. If people are liking your ad, automatically your CTR will improve, right? They're liking your ad, they're engaging, and then your CTR is improving. For the display network, if we talk about, since many users aren't clicking onto ads, but still seeing them, you can use conversions to measure your branding, right? And that is absolutely true. That should be done. So note that a conversion, the, a conversion does not have to be a sale. You can measure time of a site also, right? Or a video watched as a goal. We understood that part earlier. It can be a form fill up also. It could be a video watched. It could be a time, a specific time spent onto the website. Talking further more about reach and frequency, guys. Reach is the number of people which are exposed to your ad. And frequency is the number of times the user saw your ad. We understood that while talking about the frequency capping. Guys, let me know wherever you have any questions or any queries so that I can go ahead and answer that respectively. Now, bidding method, guys, at that point of time, we just selected across one of the bidding method. That was the manual. Otherwise, there are various other bidding methods at the campaign level, guys. And there's a bid modifier too. But the first bidding method is the one which asks uh, the advertiser to focus on click, which is the manual one only, which I did select at that point of time. So bidding uh, focus on clicks, which is the manual bidding process says the, that first of all, this is the default, uh, the default bid method for the most accounts. And this bid method gives you the most control, most control over your bids and so forth. Then the other bidding method is the budget optimizer. With budget optimizer, AdWords will always set up your cost, so set your cost per click in order to get the most traffic possible for your keywords. Now, this is a good bid method if you want the most, most uh, traffic possible, all right? In flexible bidding, this is called maximum clicks. All right, so that's with budget optimizer. Then comes in the focus on impressions, guys, which is another bidding method. Over here, the bidding method says that uh, the focus on impression is cost per thousand impression bidding. Uh, with this bid amount, you pay for the impression and not the click, right? It's only available for the display network. If your goal is branding, this is a good bid method to use. All right. Now, focusing across on conversions with conversion optimizer, you need to input a target cost per action. So you would mention that, let's say, one cost per acquisition should not be, or action should not be more than $15. I mean, this is just an example, right? And AdWords will bid for you. In that case, AdWords will bid for you in order to try and hit those CPS. You must be using conversion tracking to use that option, right? You still pay on a click basis. And this is also known as target CPA. Bidden when you use the flexible bidding option. If your goal is conversion, then this is a good bid system to be used across guys. Now the other bidding method guys is flexible bidding. Now the options for flexible bidding in, includes across enhanced CPC, maximize clicks and target CPA. What are these three? Enhanced CPC, target CPA and maximize clicks. These are the ones which are standard, uh, same, uh, they have, a standard bidding option, the, the flexible bidding. The target search page location is another one where we go ahead and let AdWords know that Mr. AdWords, you can increase or decrease my bid, but make sure that my search page location, my, the location of my text ad, so this is for the search basically, my text ad should be shown across anywhere on the first page, whether it's on the bottom or on the first, all right? So you can target search page location. You can also target outranking share. Now targeting outranking share determines 
how well are you doing against your competitors, right? So you'll put in across a bid and ask uh, Google AdWords to uh, showcase, I mean, to outrank across your competitors and set the bid accordingly. The last one is target return on ad spend, right? The target return on ad spend allows you to automatically set bids based upon a target return on ad spend goal. All right. Now the bid modifiers is one of the thing guys, which helps location, uh, which, which helps in changing the bid for a specific location also. So for a location, let's say you are running across your ad for several locations and you find out that majority of the conversions which have come across from a specific location, you can go ahead and increase your bid for, for that specific location guys, right? If you find out, let's say, uh, majority of the conversions which are coming in across are from California, you might go ahead and increase the bid. So as you can see, 10% bid has been increased for California and 20% uh, higher for Ohio and Alabama. Now this is 20% more than what the default bid is. All right. So location bid modifiers allows you to change your bids up or down in specific location and mobile modifiers is another one which allows your bid, allows you to bid higher or lower on the mobile devices. If you want to receive more calls and you do well on mobile mobile devices, then using a positive mobile uh, bid modifier can be helpful. All right, it's right up over here in the device section. Then talking more about the reports, guys. Reports are being extracted from Google AdWords at various different phases, guys. Once you have chosen a tab, let's say you've chosen across the ad group tab, you can go ahead and download. You can download across a report for a specific data range, uh, for a date range, and for a specific level. Let's say this is the ad group level, right? And so forth. You can even go ahead and get across reports related to the phone calls being monitored. So if you are running across a mobile click to call ad, you can go ahead and monitor across the phone, uh, phone calls, right? So you, you are, you're monitoring phone call involves same with segment, the click type and with watch the mobile clicks to call. All right. So that's with monitoring mobile performance and also morning, uh, monitoring by hour of the day. Now hour of the day, you can segment across uh, on the basis of the time hour, the hour and watch for patterns by time frame and so forth. Another one being paid in the organic search, organic report guys. <clears throat> now the paid and organic report allows you to see how your keywords are faring well across the paid and organic searches. To use this report, you must link your site via webmaster tools and they're also called search console. All right, so that's about paid and organic and also you get to know the paid mover report. Now the, uh, sorry, the, the top mover, the top mover report. The top mover report guys gives across an overall brief onto a quick install insight into the largest changes all across the account. For the entire account, what things have changed the highest, that is to be known across underneath the top movers report. And then comes in top increases for cost, cost what are the various reasons and top decreases or for cost, what are the different reasons? All right, so all right, so some major shape here a few optimization optimization technique or strategy to improve performance of display campaign in respect of leads or conversion. Well, it is all about going ahead and uh, looking at your performance of your campaign, and then you find out the overall opportunities. Let me just log in. All 
All right, so just logging in, give me a second. I'm showing you the various optimization techniques that only comes in the optimization techniques. They do come in when you look at the overall uh, behavior and the overall performance of the campaigns. So I'm just picking and choosing one of those. All right, so I'm just picking up one of the AdWords account guys. Just give me one second. I'm just trying to find out one of the AdWords account which does have All right, so I'm just gonna find it with the help of the search bar. I think I'll find it right now. There you go. Now the optimization techniques, initially, you can just make your judgment when you're creating your ad for the first time that these are the settings which will work the best. But that's where the overall optimization technique comes in. When you have created your ad for the first time, you don't know how well it is doing in terms of the numbers and so forth. You need to, you, you need to understand which portion of your ad, uh, AdWords is uh, working well and which one not, right? With the overall result being there. So let's say this is, these are the various uh, campaigns. I've selected one of the campaign guys. Now in this campaign, what I can do, I can, this is a display campaign only. I'm clicking on to display network. Now this is one of the optimization technique. One, once my ad has run the display campaign, I go ahead and click on to display network. All right, so it's taking time to come over. All right, here you go. Now over here, guys, if I go to the, let's say the placement section, there are like 221. All right, so click so there, all right. Can't see the screen, is that so? Oh yes, absolutely. Uh, I'm so sorry. I made a change, I made a change in the screen, all right, so what I've done, Thanks for letting me know, Anshul. I, what I've done, I've opened across Google AdWords and one of the campaigns, guys, for a client of mine, which has been done in the past. And in the campaign, guys, in the AdWords, uh, Google AdWords account, basically, I have clicked on to display network. And in the display network, we've got so many options. We've got so many targeting options. Now, when I go to the placement, guys, what I can see is, the performance of every single, right, so that's the answer to your question, Samir. Uh, once we have run across an ads, we get to see all the various different inputs and then try to understand which one is uh, pitching out to be for how much and so forth. So out of all these campaigns, For a particular campaign, basically, I mean to say, uh, these are the websites where the ad has been shown. So on practicequiz.com, the ad has been shown across two, uh, 203,000, which is 2,3,000, these many number of times the impression has been shown. And CTR has been 0 0.07. CTR is something which needs to be improved. And uh, average CPC is this much, total cost is this much. All right, so I'll look into the CTR, the number, All right, so here you go. There are several websites, guys. For all the websites, the data is right in front of us. All right, so the number of clicks which have been received, the impressions, CDR, and the average CPC. Otherwise, there are several things which has to be looked over here. 
even the conversions have been set up one gets to know the overall conversions which have happened or it's a conversion somehow has not been configured properly i believe all right so this way i will be able to pick and choose the websites for which i want to improve the ctr which is on the lower side and for that very purpose i can first of all go ahead and pause those campaigns i can pause let's say those websites for which the ctr is not coming out better either i did do this or i go ahead and change the ads i will go to the ad section now here are the various different ads guys the ad kinds i can even see the performance of every single advertisements also and then make a judgment that which advertisement kind is working well and so forth right these are the various optimization techniques we look at uh, all the different things whether it's from the ad level from the campaign level from the display network level and so forth right the placements and display targets the topics interest in remarketing i mean the several things which can be done hope it makes sense i'm moving back to my slide and sharing across the screen this time all right all right i hope the screen now is visible across for the uh, powerpoint presentation i'm just trying to double check with that uh, not really and here you go all right now the other thing in terms of the performance guys which google adwords gives us i'm just going to be quick into that is the all right we were looking at standard reports which can be at the ad group level campaign level i was talking about even we can get to know so these are the overall optimization things only that that is another uh, thing you know uh, as an answer to this question what all things should we do in terms of optimization techniques what is the strategy to improve performance we have to really dissect every single section to know how exactly it is performing we have to see how well the mobile ads are performing if the mobile call only ads have been created the mobile performance for every single device if we have selected the device types you know that point of time i was telling you that if we do not know which device type is going to work well i can go ahead and dissect the overall uh reports in a way that i can see the major conversions which are coming in are they coming in from the computer device type or the mobile device type and so forth when i get to see that i can go ahead and run my ads only for that particular device type similarly we do get to know in the reporting section that which particular hour of the day has given us much better conversions all right now this is provided across underneath the uh, dimensions tab do you want me to go ahead and show it to you again all right give me a second i'll be just quick on to that again so dimensions is a tab where we get to see many more things with regards to the performance of a campaign so underneath dimensions when i click on to let's say first of all so conversions is one thing which we can do top movers is another one things which moved uh, much more from geographical point of view i can see for where did the which particular place gave us the much more conversions all right from the geographical point of view and also let's say time of the day i type in day of the week so which particular day of the week has given me much better performance uh lower cpc and higher number of conversions and so forth well this particular campaign guys 
the conversions were not being set up. I can definitely go ahead and show you uh, one more AdWords account which does have the conversions also set up and much more data is there, but we are, uh, we don't have much more time right now. So I'm just being quick onto this. It's the dimension tab, which helps us to understand every single portion, right? And uh, we are able to dissect across our performance from all those single portions and see what is the best recipe. We'll pick and choose. We'll pick and choose the performers and uh, eradicate across the non-performers basically. All right. So from the automated placement, paid and organic, geographical, time, day of the week, which particular day, week, month, and so forth, hour of the day, we can even get to know that which specific hour of the day we have received much better conversions and at a lesser cost and so forth. Right, so we run, uh, we put in more money of ours for those hours, for those particular day, for those particular placements, for those particular uh, devices and so forth, right? We get across the entire recipe this way. Hope it makes sense. And I'm going back to the presentation slide. All right, so we monitor by hour of the day and paid and organic report was another which was there in the dimensions. We uh, get to know that which keywords fared well across both the paid and the organic. Now this is from the search, so that's why I'm not talking more about it. To use this report, you must, you have to link your website guys with another Google product that is called Google Webmaster, all right? It's also called as Search Console. We also get to know the top movers report. The top movers report gives us a quick insight into the largest changes which have happened across the account, all right? And then the search term report gives us the overall search terms which have brought in a good amount of conversions. Placement performance report I have shown you the place the, the overall websites where our ad was present and it did fare well. We will look for those and the one where it didn't the you know maybe the impressions were coming in clicks didn't come or where the numbers the clicks also came but conversions didn't come. We might really eradicate that website. Another thing guys in the uh, performance metric is the auction insights which we have to look at. Auction insight is a report that shows how well is our website, how well our website is doing vis-a-vis -vis the competition. All right. So it shows us the competition for a campaign ad group or a keyword. In, in addition, you can see how you fared against a specific URL. If you want to compare yourself to the competition, the auction insight report is a useful report to monitor. So this also comes under the uh, dimension tab basically and so forth. Now there are certain tools guys, which AdWords do provide. One is the conversion tracking. I was showing you that on the top in the tool section, you have to punch in across details regarding what conversions, what is your definition of conversion? Is it a form fill up? Is it a sale on your website? Is it a call? or uh, is it a, a video view and so forth. So this is one of the tool. The other one is conversion types. That's the same thing, right? In that similar thing you've mentioned, what is that conversion type? Is it a form fill up and so forth? Keyword planner is one which is used for the search. So I'm just skipping this one. Display planner guys is one great tool which is underneath, which is provided by Google AdWords only that gives a lot of suggestions in terms of uh, on which all website should you show your banner ads or your display ads basically. And uh, if you are going for targeting, what should be your keywords, the display keywords, what should be your topics, interest and so forth and placement. So these are the various different uh, suggestions which display planner tool gives and that that's, this is quite an amazing tool for that. Right. So this display planners search results also gives across information about uh, from the demographic demographic perspective uh, that what gender, what device and so forth you should really go for. Then there is another tool guys, which is called AdWords editor. That is something which you can uh, download from the internet. Just type in uh, download Google AdWords editor for your system. This helps you to work across onto Google AdWords pretty easily without uh, getting into that hassle of you know, uh, scrolling up and down and so forth. It will give you a holistic 
view a bigger view in its uh, panel and it's it's just a uh, a software basically which works across when internet is connected all right so this tool also the other beneficial benefit about this tool is that you can work on to it in the offline mode so if your internet is not connected you can make changes into the advertisement at the offline mode the moment it will get connected to internet the those changes will be synced then would be would go live all right and then there is ad view this is more to do with the uh, uh, seeing whether your ad is appearing across for a certain query and so forth all right now the, there are further more things which are related to <clears throat> display advertisements only let me just see one second how much time do we have all right so uh, we might continue for another 15 20 minutes do you guys want to uh, a break or shall we continue do you want a 5 10 minutes break and then continue or shall we without a break shall we continue is there any question guys any questions any doubt you have feel free to put that in the chat window All right, so I, I believe it's all okay if, we, if I move further because it's 3.15. Can we uh, do it till 3.45 or 3.50? Is it okay? I'll need another uh, 20 minutes or so to cover this part. All right, perfect. Thanks for acknowledging. All right. So some more on the display ads, guys. Now these are some extra uh, stuff uh, with regards to forming a display ad, with regards to uh, looking at how to optimize it, with regards to the settings and so forth. We have covered that part. All right. Now, the other things are the display ad sizes. Now I'll be sharing across this presentation, guys, or plus. Thus, the recording will also be shared across with each one of you. So don't worry, this, this data is going to be right with, with each one of you. So he says, which ad format do you think is useful in display? HTML5 or create, create different ad size of different, different ad size of different ads. Like I said, uh, HTML5 is a great technology. It's a new technology. So, I mean, that's, uh, so it's, it's been working well for... Uh, in, in most of, so for most of the reasons, number one that it is, uh, it works well on majority of the websites. It's, uh, it doesn't occupy, it doesn't really take in a lot of uh, space, right? It's responsive also HTML5, but uh, still one should not really go ahead and restrict himself or herself to one of those. Like I said, it's all about testing and trying. Testing and trying is the key in order to come up with the uh, solution, in, in order to come up with the what do you say, conclusion that, okay, this uh, would work better or that would work better, right? You have to really run that and then see which one is doing well for your case. It varies from scenario to scenario, from business to business. All right, now talking about the display ad sizes, guys, uh, there are, in this particular chart, we have, got, we have mentioned all the various different ad sizes with their dimensions being here. 300 by 250 pixels, 336 by 280, so rectangular, half page ads, banner ads, half banner skyscraper, white skyscraper and so forth. Where exactly are they featured? Even that's been mentioned. Are they featured in the website sidebars? Are they mentioned in the right or the left hand side? They're placed onto the top or inserted in an article. It's all mentioned over here. When we were, uh, when we created across these, uh, what do you say, ads just a while back, which Google did for us, we didn't have to really bother ourselves with the different ad sizes because Google automatically created uh, banner ads for every single ad size Google allows, right? What we can do is we can go ahead and pick and choose the ones which we want and we, uh, we will let them uh, play and we'll pause the ones which we do not need. 
it's also mentioned the amount of supply which is there so not many websites not many websites in google display network have got uh, you know 468 by 60 pixel banner and uh, 234 by 61 and so forth. These are the two ones which are declining in terms of inventory. Now, what are the types on accepted formats of ads? Well, there are three main types of display ads, guys. Static, animated, and interactive. For static banners, the accepted formats are the JPG, 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 PNG, and GIF. All right. Animated banners that can be uploaded as GIF or SWF, which is Flash. And interactive banners are different from the animated, which they require an action from the user. Those can be uploaded only as SWF. Now, these are all some good to know information, guys. There is no logic over here with these, all these. The technical requirements, if we say static, static or animated, all display ads uh, that run on Google Display Network, Network must be up to 150 kilobytes or smaller than that. All right. Otherwise, your ads will get disapproved, guys. Animated or interactive ads needs to be 15 seconds. 15 seconds or shorter. You are allowed to use loops in your display ads, but the animation length cannot exceed the 15 second length mentioned before. Right, so the GIF ads are uploaded same as PNG. Uh, PNG ads, PNG is one of the, uh, GIF, GIF is the animated one basically, they're, they're different. So several PNG uh, included can make a GIF one. That's what. So GIF ads with multiple slides, so like it says, you know, you, if you have multiple slides of let's say PNG, that will become a GIF ad. GIF ads with multiple slides needs to have speed of up to five frames per second. For flash ads, frame speed can go up to 20 frames per second or even lower. In addition, all flash ads needs to have the click tag variable set and so forth. Now, again, like I said, you just really need to know all these, but the best thing to go ahead with this to uh, take the help of the Google Display Builder tool, which we did a while back. In terms of the content, guys, ads that run on Google Display Networks are subject to few rules when it comes to what you are actually featuring in the ad. If you're using images, make sure that they are clear, they're not blurred, they're easy recognizable, they're easy to recognize, and you're not allowed to use, like I said, blurry and flashing backgrounds, not allowed. You must use the entire space in your banner ad and you can't feature multiple copies within the ad guys. That's not allowed. And don't imitate site content news or text ads. You're not allowed by any means to trick users by clicking your ads, right? You, you should not say that click here, we'll give you this, click here, we'll give you that. Do not trick them. What does this mean? Do not mimic system or site warning, operating system dialogue boxes or error messages. People try to do that, right? So, I mean, they have been uh, they, then they have been uh, disapproved and they get to keep, keep getting disapproved when they, when people try uploading them. Your display ad must have distinct look and feel of an ad and must be easily separated from the page content. Also guys, if you're using a white background, make sure you add a contrasting border to make your banner. You can replicate animated features or icons as long as those exist on your landing page. All right, now talking about the content, guys, there are certain restricted content categories. While you can advertise a broad range of products and services on the Google Display Network, there are a few sensitive categories. I was talking about that. You're not allowed to advertise entire violent concepts or ads against uh, an organization, person, group of people, or a protected group distinguished by race or you know uh, some religion, some color, national, nationality, and so forth. Alcoholic beverages, including beer, wine, and spirits, not allowed. Escort services, prostitution, adult sexual services, not allowed. Offline gambling, online gambling, gambling-related products, this, these all things Google do not allow. Even promotion of illegal drugs, legal or synthetic highs, herbal drugs, chemicals and compounds with uh, you know, psychoactive uh, effects, drug para, paraphernalia, or aids to pass drugs tests, and so forth. Websites which are infected with malware, with virus attacks and so forth, with spywares and so forth, also are not allowed to be promoted across. All right, now what are the various tips uh, which will make a good display ad? These are some more extra stuff. The very first thing is to always focus on the customer. You should know what your customer is really looking for, right? When you design an ad, uh, it is, it's all about considering your customers. If you want to get more clicks, leads or sales, you need to get your target audience attention. 
and you can easily do that by using elements facts product features and benefits in a way that capture their interest take a few minutes and think about your customers what exactly are they interested uh, what attracts their attention what are they all passionate about how can you really help them solve those problems brainstorm a few approaches to see which one works the best for your customers if you have special offers or free trials mention let's say you know you're mentioned in the advertisement that this is what you're offering and at the end of the day google does a manual check and see that your ad did say this but your landing page is saying something else that might really get you in trouble right because google, when the moment the moment google is going to detect that they're going to not just block your uh, maybe one of the ads there's a possibility that your entire uh, google adwords account get blocked because so you're not allowed to dupe in in this way right brainstorm on few approaches to see which one works the best for your computer for for your customers like i said it's all hit and trial so you run across various different uh, advertisements and see which one works the best so you've got uh, different ways different messages if you have special offers and free trials mention those in your display ad copy like i said free special offer limited discount they all are powerful words right and make sure that you're not uh, writing them just for the purpose of getting attention and so forth another tip for making across a better advertisement is usage of branding now adding elements one second adding elements that are specific to your business can help you build trust and awareness right with your audience use your logo uh, that's one thing which will build in credibility faster uh, so that customers can have an easy time identifying who is this organization who's promoting across the stuff many of the banner ads they fail to uh, you know showcase the logo and so forth and that that takes time that takes time for the end customer to really understand you know where has this banner had come from and who is this and your branding doesn't happen make use of your website's color scheme in your banner ads that's one and the more similar your banner is to your landing page the smoother the user experience is going to be so it has to be all in sequence guys right the designing element the, even the content they all have to be in relevant people don't always like surprises so don't, don't do it in a fashion like your ad is being created in a very different design the design of your banner ads are way too different to what your uh, websites pages are and so forth people don't always like surprises and if you target them to a landing page that's very different from your banner they might leave straight off right so uh playing a risky affair might really cost you some so it's, it's always to go ahead and de-risk it and try to be plain simple and talk in the same uh design which your website also have for your ads do make sure that you have a call to action on your banner so without being told so specifically your viewers won't take any action you have to really let them know that this is what you really need to do is it that if they have to click on a button that says no more or do they have to click on to a button which says call now or do they have to really go ahead and uh, click on to something which says uh, uh, sign up now and so forth so having a add a call to action adding a call to action to your display ads and telling your viewers user exactly what you want them to do you can ask them to read more shop more learn more sign up uh, call now and so forth for best results integrate the call to action with the rest of the messaging on your banner right that's very important now good designs do matter so whatever you do resist that temptation to add uh, too many details to your banner you know it's all going to get cluttered and so forth it will only make your banner look way too much overcrowded look crowded and so forth keep the design simple make sure there is proper spacing in between so that the human eye is able to read across the content easily and uh, do not also overdo with the colors bad design doesn't inspire trust and that could hurt your campaign performance right another rule to follow here is to make sure that you use across a typeface and a font size that's easy to read right now these are from the design perspective and also make sure that whatever font size you are following for one particular uh, advertisement you follow the same for the other right it should not be like uh, 
your various different ad types, your various different ad designs have different uh, font sizes being experimented and so forth. It's all about testing and testing and testing, a hit and trial and so forth. You can say you never know what will work until you try it. So that's all together in uh, the entire internet marketing. It works like that. While display advertising, I mean, I'm not saying just go blindly and then do hit and trial. It all has to be backed up with a lot of logics and a lot of facts and figures you have with you with the previous campaigns which you have you know, created and run. Display advertising does offer you some control over who sees your ad. It's not an exact science. Each business has its own secret recipe for success and you can't really know until it you, you know, you have tried and tested it out. Do try to test out different ad display ad sizes to find the one that performs best for your business. Don't stop at the ad sizes though. Test other elements also as well, like making sure that uh, you are using different headlines, different uh, you know background images, different call to action in your different ad, ad advertisements, so that you are getting to know the performance for each one of them. The one which will perform the best, you go ahead and continue that particular advertisement copy that uh, the, it might be that the heading or the call to action in that particular ad is more attractive than the other one for the, for the end audience. Whether you are looking to attract new customers or you're looking at bringing the lost ones back with the retargeting option, display ads are very efficient to advertise in that way. Right now, some more stuff with regards to, like I said, possible reasons why banner ads do get disapproved for many people when they start fresh. Well, the number one reason for disapproval is the landing page. All right. The landing page experience not being provided. Well, a landing page that doesn't provide a good experience will get your ad disapproved. Even if your banner ad complies with all the technical and uh, technical compliances, content guidelines at place in order to fix it. First, make sure that you are linking it to a website which is in workable situation and you're not allowed to link to you know those 404 pages the error pages or uh, by using across short links or redirects you know, that's not allowed second mistake common mistake with people do that that their page enables uh, second uh, is that they, they do not enable they do not provide good experience so landing page must have a proper navigation in place. It should provide useful information, relevant information on what is being advertised. What is being advertised? If it's all haphazard, there's no navigation. Uh, then there might be another. This might be another reason for Google to go ahead and ban your specific landing page. You also need to make sure that you promote trust and transparency. Have a privacy policy in the page that tells users what they will receive across. Another common reason for advertisement to be uh, banner ads to be banned across or disapproved rather is the poor image quality. I like said, having a blurry, unprofessional or distort, dis disordered images or text and your, uh, you know, if you're going to have that, your banner ad is said to get across disapproved. You shouldn't be really surprised. If that happens, you know, if you're doing this and your banner ads is getting disapproved, the images you use across your banner ads needs to be very clear and easily recognizable. Also, the text must be legible. Another reason for your ads getting disapproved is when you are using a copyrighted material, you know, you have gone ahead and used uh, a material which has got a trademark logos of someone else. You're not allowed to use materials, trademark logos for which you do not own any copyright, right? Or for which you do not have the distribution rights. If you want to use trademark items, you need to submit an application with the ad network to prove that you have the distribution rights. So this is, there are certain special scenarios. You have to take permission from that particular advertiser, that particular uh, person whose trademark your whose, whose logo and so forth you're using, right? You have the distribution rights. Animations uh, which runs longer than 30 seconds, that is also not uh, allowed. If there are, then uh, your ad will definitely get disapproved. So animations or interactive banner image ads are limited to 30 seconds. If you're submitted, submitting across, let's say, a GIF or a flash banner ad, right, uh, 
which is more than 30 seconds, it will get disapproved. Check if your animation length does not exceed 30 seconds. Also, your animation can be looping, but again, it has to stop after 30, it, it needs to stop within 30 seconds only. If you used Flash or other software to create the banner, use existing features to stop the loop before 30 seconds. Make sure that the frame speed also complies as well. GIF banner ads are allowed a frame speed of, like I mentioned before, uh, five, frame, five frames per second and flash files are allowed 24 frames per second speed or slower than that. Now these things might be uh, very new guys, but uh, you know, you would be, when you would be hiring, let's say, or you have, a, you have a designer already, you have to let the designer know that these are the things which you have to keep in mind. These are the ad sizes. These are the overall compliances in terms of uh, in the display ad. It should not be more than 30 seconds if it's a if it's a animated one and so forth. It should not be more than 150 kilobytes and so forth. And no no any uh, no uh, blurry images and so forth are allowed. Now the other uh, reason for an ad getting disapproved is that you have embedded a video in your banner ad. Now that's not allowed. Banner ads can feature animations or interactivity, but you cannot embed videos in the banner ads. That's not allowed as of now. Plus, if you are trying to trick the user into clicking your ad, that is another reason for a disapproval. So for a good user experience, website visitors need to be able to easily discern the ads feature on a page from the content of the page itself. Site warnings, system dialog boxes, error messages, anything that blurs the distinction and tries to trick the user into clicking results and uh, results into an ad disapproval, all right? Also make sure that you offer, that the offer or product can be easily identified in connection to the brand, that should be there. The logo, name, additionally, if you are using PNG files with transparent backgrounds or ads that feature a wide background. So you need to add one pixel border to make your ad stand out from the website in that case. All right, and the other last one is that the content you are advertising, uh, if it's not, if that one is not approved. So I already told you the overall kind of websites from which all industries, uh, you know, which all industries can really go ahead and promote. So if you are having a website which is related to uh, the gambling stuff and drugs and so forth, uh, then all these are subject to additional restrictions, especially when it comes to Google AdWords. Right, so make sure that you go ahead and promote across only those stuff which are allowed. Now the last thing guys, which is uh, for today, just another 10 more minutes. So we'll be done by uh, 3.45 or so. This is with the overall distinction between the Google display ads versus the text ads. Now there's a huge debate guys, which happens amongst marketers that search ads are more beneficial. It brings us more leads when uh, display ads are no more good, I mean, they, they do not get us a lot of leads or even if they're used across for branding purposes, it's very difficult to really measure how much branding have they uh, bought for us, whether there was an increase in the sales or not with the help of uh, Google display ads. Let's try to uh, understand more things about it. Which one is better? Uh, is it Google display running just Google display? Is it the best thing to do? Is it just running Google search ads, which is the best thing to do, or is it like running both of them together is the best recipe like, all right? And also from the cost perspective, we'll try to see that. Well, Google Display Network is good uh, from the perspective that it reaches up to 90 plus percent of the internet users, like I said, across over 2 million websites, and it gives marketers the opportunity to reach more prospects, reach prospects at every stage, right, of the sale funnel. Now, if you look at the sales funnel, the paid search majorly focuses across on the bottom side of the funnel. And whereas the display focuses across on the entire funnel, starting from the awareness, interest, consideration, evaluation, the purchase stage. All right, now display ads, they uh, play point guard on the paid search team. In order to yield the highest ROI, now this is where the maximum uh, people try to understand how can we really get across the maximum return on investment? Is it a combination of Google, uh, search or a display or what is it? Well, in order to yield the highest ROI from your paid search campaign, now for your paid search campaign, a combination of search and display ad should be implemented. Now, there are several studies which say that, guys. 
that search and display should be implemented together rather than one or the other. Display advertising is very effective at driving assisted conversion, right? Assisted conversion, when we say, it's very much like the uh, building blocks, basically, to the other campaigns, rather than generating its own conversion. So display is primarily might not work on its own, but it would help the other campaigns to get their conversion level up, conversion percentage up. The, one of the great way to, to think it this way is, is, is to really think of a basketball match. Well, the point guard did so well dissecting the di defense that his teammates gains, the reward of an easy dunk, right? The goal gets it, the goal is achieved, but not without the point guard getting the ball through the traffic and closing to the bucket. So all those people who are, you know, assisting in between, they have a role to play. And similarly, display is more towards that particular uh, person who's doing, who's, who's passing the ball to the person who's making the dunk, right? Who's, who's scoring the goal, who's scoring the basket. All right. Another thing with the uh, display ads from the benefit, the benefit if we say over search is that the custom imagery always leads to brand diff. It's been seen and observed and studied that when you run across a display campaign, there's always a brand lift. People try to recognize that brand and that particular branded keyword, you know, the keyword of that, that particular brand name uh, is being typed across more in the search term that way. So that leads to much more visits, revisits to your website, right? So the use of custom imagery in the display ads can provide a lift in the brand searches. The search engine click-through rates improves the direct visits, which I said, people do type in across the brand name directly into the browsers when they see the display ads. 90% of this overall information, which is transmitted through the images, which is the display, majorly the display ads, to the brain is visual and 40% of the people respond better to visual information than the plain text, right? So that's a major benefit. Combining that with the multiple touch points with the display network. So display is also giving you, giving across ability to the advertiser to touch base with the audience on several points not so with search it's only text plus only at one single touch uh, touch point which is the search engine result page whereas with google oh sorry whereas with google display the display it's several touch points plus the imagery stuff is there right which which impacts more so you've got a recipe this way to increase the brand recognition which often equals more traffic and more sales all in all, in short, search ads used along with display ads always gets you much higher return and investment or much higher conversion rate, which you might not be able to achieve with search uh, campaign being run independently as an individual campaign or display campaign being run individually. It's, uh, it's totally a team effort, which, uh, which get, you know, which happens, which, which makes the return investment go higher when both of them are being run together. Well, display advertising offers multiple targeting options, which we know about, keep the contextual targeting, demographics, topics, interest, right, placements and remarketing. And targeting separately versus layering, layering targeting. All of the different targeting options, which are covered across in the previous slides, which we just saw, can be executed as a standalone, all right? Like uh, if we just have display keyword, it can be one of them. It can be just uh, topics and so forth. Now, this is one great feature with display targeting that you can choose in various different settings, various different targeting and the one which is common that leads to narrow targeting and uh, that, that brings in much, much better results, right? So working together can narrow your target audience to be very particular and very precise and very niche audience gets targeted through this. You have to keep in mind that too much focus also can leave the target audience to be very small uh, so that you will not receive any impression. So make sure that there are at, at least some handful impressions with you when you use across multiple targeting options. All right. Also from the cost point of view, the advantage is there with display advertising. In most cases, the cost per click on the display network are half the cost of the cost per clicks in a standard search campaign, guys, which allows you to generate more impressions, more clicks, and more sales 
for lesser amount of money so it is a win win situation keep in mind that there are two types of bid strategies which we have understood earlier cpc cost per click and the cost per thousand impressions which was the cpm we understood this earlier that's all for today guys thank you so much like i said by 3:45 we would be done and we are uh, done by that time any questions before we wrap up the today's session any questions any doubts any feedback which you want to give uh, was the session helpful was it way too much overwhelming or was it a lot of information any suggestions any further feedback you want to give uh would i'll just pass on the uh, rights to parov i'll i'll unmute parov just give me a second yeah thank you thank you nick uh, thanks a lot you know uh, uh, was i think i think personally was a great session thanks for all the input sign you know all, all the information that you shared uh, you know and thanks to everyone on the meeting you know for taking time out you know and uh, attending the session uh you know we look forward to getting more feedback from you in terms of you know what you want us to uh share with you in, in our forthcoming sessions uh please do feel free to share your feedback with me or with rakesh alpesh you know uh, whoever you are in touch with we'll be more than happy to get feedback and you know uh, you know and hopefully this was helpful to you and you know you'll be you'll be able to use it uh, in your day to day work life uh look forward to hearing from you and uh, working together Thanks once again. Uh, if there aren't any questions, we can just wrap this up for the day. And thanks once again, Nick. Thank you, Gaurav. Thanks, everyone. Thanks, and uh, we'll we'll keep on having more sessions like this. Take care, guys. Thank you. Thank you.